Ready? Are we, are we cracking? We're opening them up, are baby. Cracking? One, two, three. Ooh, oh, oh damn. <laughs> oh, we're fizzy. Oh, yeah. Sorry about that, man. No, it's good. Oh, hey. <laughs> it's a wake up. Oh, shit. Oh, it's so tingly. I'm not a sparkling water person. I don't know why people like this shit. It's weird. I'm so thirsty, dude. Last night was crazy. <laughs> I'm so tired. Yeah, yeah. Well, I saw you playing drums, so, you know. Yeah, drums. And it was hotter than shit. Dude, crazy I, ass hot. All the bands are like, man, it's so hot. I'm like, dude, it is crazy hot in here. I must say, I appreciate the lighting. Oh, uh, our light show? Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. It's, you know, uh, Home Depot, baby. Hell yeah. <laughs> hey, we rolled... God, well, we, we, we had a lighting director so back in the day, mm. so... It was a little bit different. Um, yeah, LD. You know, she she would do you know Veronica actually, yeah. my uh, my spouse and partner in Monster Boy Lives used to do all the. She had like a Martin Freaky board. Damn, and really? Then she moved over to um, DMXs. Yeah, 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 DMX. Yeah, that's tight. I we just use sound because it's just blinking lights. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And it's all chaos anyway. <laughs> if we were gonna add, we had movers at one point, like lights that you know move around. Mm -hmm. And they started fritzing. They going going on the fritz. So we just don't even. We just use the blinky ones now. So I would get a little worried with how like wild your stage show is that somebody would kick it over, and you're like, oh, that's it's, like it's happened, dude. That's like a three hundred dollar piece of equipment, yeah. you know. <laughs> uh. Sometimes shows cost us money for sure. Yeah. I thought Todd broke his foot last night. Did you see when he fell off the case when he crowd yeah, surfed? Yeah, yeah, I saw that. I was yeah. Or crowd surfed like he stage. wave surfed. He like. I don't know how he did it, but he fell like at an angle, but somehow managed to kick the ego riser out. All the lights came out, and then he went flying forward face first. Yeah, yeah. Still, still like on beat though. Danger, <laughs> danger, high voltage. <laughs> that night was crazy. Anyway, we get done, and Jackson comes on stage and he goes, "No one turned the fan on." <laughs> what the fuck, dude? You mean to tell? They had a giant. But it's black, so it just mixes in with the yeah, black like, wall and the black curtains. Like, I didn't see the fan. I was like, he was like, I just thought it was on. It's Jackson, it's 100 degrees up here. What do you mean you <laughs> thought it was on? But it was fun. Last night was great, man. I'm just, I am fucking paying for it right now. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. That was awesome. I was glad to be there. It was cool. Dude, Punks was for weird. pause night. Yeah, man. Chris Hill, you go, dude. <clears throat> he, uh, he killed it. And they raised a lot of good money. Uh, what'd you say it was, Kurt? Like seventeen hundred dollars or something like that. That's a, that's awesome. Oh, yeah, yeah. All for the puppies and the and the kitty cats. They had a little thing too. Were you there beforehand? For the adoption no, thing? no, no, no. Uh, so I was on reconnaissance yesterday reconnaissance. Uh, for for new bands to play with that, okay. that kind of fit Monster Boy because we're Monster Boy lives because we're 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 weird. A lot of our stuff is like has pr like primarily been real poppy and like okay. I'd say like indie rock is maybe a good way to put it, but then um, we saw like we inked a deal with uh, a record label under APM last year mm -hmm. uh, in December called Kinetic, and the four songs they wanted. Now this is like a, a music licensing house right. that has a record label as a division. Uh, so this this is the not like a traditional record deal where you would see like they take 360 and they like put you on tour and they mm. do all the radio and stuff. Um, we are getting some record label like services from them, but like distribution and stuff. Uh, no, no, we still handle distribution. So what they Dang. do is they push out our music to music supervisors ah, gotcha. that are doing TV, yeah, film, yeah, yeah. and stuff. You like know, sync and shit like that. Exactly, yeah. exactly. Um, but they uh, they have all they are also like uh, doing some promo stuff, and they've got some acts that are on their kinetic, kinetic label. They're, they're like, hey, we could hook you up with with contact to to go on mm. tour with them for some short runs right. around uh, the middle U.S. But anyway, so uh, so what they signed to Kinetic last year was four songs, and we're boppy, we're upbeat, we're fun, yeah, yeah, yeah. we're saxophones and soulful vocals. Is that what makes it weird, or is it like a timing signature thing where y'all are just like uh, quick to something, then slow? Oh no, then... it's you know we're very pop. It's like danceable, like like um, yeah. I don't, uh, 
be uh, interested. I'll, I'll listen. I'll, is it is it anywhere to find yet? Yeah, yeah. We're, we've it? got we've got like eight, uh, no, fifteen songs out so oh, far. Oh shit! Okay. Uh, we got three more, um, or four more that are going to be out which by the time this is out. This will be out a couple, like maybe a week ago. Oh, okay. Uh, it's coming out on the twenty third. Oh yeah, the, yeah. The, this will be out probably the week after that. Yeah. Cool. Uh, so they they wanted my industrial shit. So it was like, <laughs> so a lot of our stuff, like we've got these EDM elements. We've got the, like, okay. like I love break beats and stuff. Uh-huh. I love electronic drum programming is like, is like really fun for me. Um, and so like I've got the, and I've got like hip hop sub bass that sits underneath Veronica's saxophone sometimes. Sick. Cause she's very much more of a, a like a bass player uh-huh. or in our acoustic stuff. She's a little bit more like a cellist on a, on a oh, berry saxophone. Fuck yeah. It's real smooth and, and she's got a great tone. I like that. Um, so, th- like we, we've got all these things like these bassy thing, like these crazy things that are underlining our our soulful vocals and uh-huh. the and the rock sort of thing. And then we just flipped that on its head for these four songs, where it's it's like the EDM elements they take center stage. And we've got like a Run the Jewels type hip hop sort okay. of frenetic, yeah, yeah, yeah. like progressive. In, instrumental called heavy and that's the title of the ep uh, okay and that's and you know and then like you know it's going wild and then all of a sudden in comes the berry sax <laughs> and so yeah so um yeah we contacted <sighs> saxophone um, is dope man we need more horns <laughs> and more music i love horns and music i like it too i like yeah. it too um i've been uh hearing some other cool acts uh they're not new or anything but it, one of the things we saw when we went to Bonnaroo in 2017, 2018, mm-hmm. there's this act from Sweden called Goldfish. Okay. They sort of like build out all their music, like Crystal Method or or uh, Chemical Brothers. You know, oh, okay. they're like building yeah. their beats and they got all their sequencers and they're stuff. They're doing it all right there in real time. Mm-hmm. Nice. And then all of a sudden, bam, guy whips out a stand up bass and the other dude whips out <laughs> like a, 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 an alto saxophone. And I was like, that's dope. Yeah. So um, that was kind of an uh, not an influence on on, on our us musically, but just like seeing that happen, I was like, like that that's something that we could do, uh, right? Yeah. You know, on stage, it's an idea, and you can say, "Oh, what's my version of that?" Yeah, yeah, yeah. I love those moments. How do I bring in the alternative rock and the mm-hmm. and the grunge and stuff that I grew up with, and mix it all together in yeah. big musical soup? Yeah, yeah. So, uh, so yesterday I was doing reconnaissance for right, bands right. that we could play with. We contacted Chris King over at Stickies. You know, it's like we want we want to do something um, to celebrate the the EP coming out and play some shows where we do a little bit more of our electronica and rock stuff. And he's like, "Yeah, okay, cool. Who would you play with?" And we're like, "Oh shit, we thought you would know. <laughs> 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 like, like you're, you're you're the guy who knows all the bands." So um, it's 2023, baby. You got to do all that yourself. <laughs> So I, well, I got real sick. Um, oh, yeah, yeah, they did. Lots of people. Uh, so Veronica got sick in 2019 with a rare adrenal issue. Okay. I was worried I was going to lose her. Um, mm, damn. Yeah, it was pretty scary. Then she went to an endocrinologist. They figured out one pill, and she's fine. So 2020, the pandemic uh-huh. happens. She's just gotten to where like she's like working normally again. Her body's functioning again. Uh-huh. I come down with a rare adrenal issue. Goes undiagnosed for like two years. Uh um, both have a rare Yeah, yeah. The same thing? No, no, no. She had like primary aldosteronism. So oh. like uh her body like there's a a sensor that says there's too much salt. And so she had basically she got like a a pill that bypasses the sensor. Okay. Um my adrenal issue was low cortisol. So like almost like uh so you just drained of energy all day kind of feeling. Yeah, exactly. I was sleeping 16 hours a day. Damn. Rejecting f- first uh, rejecting pills at first and then rejecting foods all the way down Ooh. to like I could eat rice and that was it. Rice and avocado. Um yeah, so they did a bunch of like and I'm a singer. So they did a bunch of like esophageal stretches and stuff like that. It was really like a scary time. Yeah. But then like and it messed with my memory too. So like, really, yeah. Damn. Not that I was like real good with memory before. Right. Yeah, same. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, so it was weird. Uh, you know, and then they put me on hydrocortisone. My body started making its own cortisol. I got 
like finally healed and healthy um, this year. So, so for like from 2019 to this year, I missed out on so many shows and like cool bands. Oh, and so y'all stuff. are just starting to get out there and. So we kind of have been playing this whole time. We we that's you know we ended did you up do the online thing. Yeah, we did some online mm-hmm. things. Uh, we did sixty live streams in a row before what I lost the my fuck? voice. Sixty? Yeah. Uh, yeah, it was cool. Uh, wow. It was like it was like Veronica had just gotten healed, and I hadn't really gotten sick yet. Yeah, yeah. Uh, and so we were live streaming on Facebook, and we ended up like seven thousand households the night were tuning in to see Holy us. Holy shit! Like we got up to that, and it was like really cool. That is really cool. And, Holy uh, fuck. <laughs> and that was like, you know, because we own, we own a salon. We play music together. That's it. So y'all both cut hair? Your hair, your uh, hair I'm a massage therapist. Massage therapist. Mm-hmm. Okay. Yeah. I'm like a background in physical therapy. and Oh, you know, nice. I worked in... Uh, yeah. Take a look at my lower back after this. Yeah. <laughs> no, I mean, Patreon. <laughs> you know? <laughs> so we... Uh, so we had no money so the only thing that we had coming in during the pandemic was people buying like hair products from v mm. and uh tips from playing on live streams damn so seven thousand people a night that's that's crazy awesome it was really cool um when were we all partnered started, up with someone or you just started at zero and just oh yeah we were just, just caught on we we just um so we, we were like we want to play music but we're like in our house and we can't mm-hmm. go anywhere it's like let's just like let me boot up OBS. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, and let's let's get my stream key for Facebook and let's just like stream. And then it got to a point where we were like um, streaming on Twitch through OBS and we were streaming on Facebook through our two of our phones, one of our phones. That's right. And then the other one was streaming to Instagram. Is that it? It might have been it. <laughs> Doing both at the same time. Yeah. 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 Uh, it's, it was uh, it was cool, and we were just like, uh, people like really reacted well to it. So we just kept coming back day after day, and we play for two or three hours, and just like you know have our like married couple spatting that we do. Right, right. Um, and people really connected with that because they're like real life. Yeah, <laughs> they're like, oh, they're hamming it up. We're like, yeah, sure, we're, we're <laughs> hamming okay. it up. You missed the C <laughs> and the change on the fifth. <laughs> Fuck. <laughs> uh. But yes, Veronica really said she really got like her head around um, a lot of the live performance stuff. Uh, she came back to playing music in 2018 after 20 years of putting her horn down. 20 years? Mm-hmm. That's a long ass time. And she worked in like management, lighting direction, stage design and stuff. Okay. You know, with, so she was on the other side, the production end of it all. Mm-hmm, yeah, I mm-hmm. get that. Um, but then like... Uh, this is kind of a long story. I hope you don't mind if I oh, go into this. Dude, it's what we're here for. Yeah. 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 <laughs> so uh It's interesting. So like uh a band broke up in twenty sixteen and I was like kind Your of Your old band? Yeah, my old band. Mm-hmm. Um and I was kind of floundering and I was like playing these acoustic solo gigs. As I, one does. Yeah. yeah. And yeah. I was like doing open mics and shit. Mm-hmm. And I'm like, I had been selling out the rev room and fucking, we played South by Southwest right. and shit. Now I'm like, please, I am please. Chris. <laughs> Busking. Like, please. Can I? <laughs> A little bit. Yeah. 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 Um, Cause you know, like I had all these songs, but then I was just like, uh, I was heartbroken a little bit, sure, you know, and it was mostly my own fault, but uh, but here we are, you know, anything, especially bands, man, it's tough. It hits, it's hard because you're used to it, right? Yeah, yeah. And it's just like, damn, and then it's part of your life that's just gone. Like, oh, th- the, yeah, Thursday is not practice now. You, well, you, you pour so much <laughs> of yourself into it because that is what music is for most musicians. It's yeah, it's just a reflection of the self, the outward reflection via notes. It's like a mirror, you know, yeah. but with sonic waves, and it sucks. I've been there a couple times, and it's just wow. like, fuck, man. And then you're ser- you kind of get in your head, you know. You're searching around. You're like, do I start another band or, yeah. or hey, do you just want to come jam? You know, you have like ten different friends come over and just pal around, drink a thirty pack, and just riff. <laughs> I, I get it. I get I'm it. Just I'm not like a solo kind of guy. Nah, I'm not I'm, either. I'm really not. I like I like camaraderie on stage. Mm-hmm. I like having someone's energy to play off of. Even if it's just one other person, like yeah. a two piece, I'm down with that. And that's what we are. Um, 
we we actually we did roll with a drummer for a little while, but then he chose Mardi Gras over playing South by Southwest. We had an official friggin' <laughs> showcase, and uh, and then we had to like call all the people we had showcases with around that official and be like, "Oh, hey, I'm sorry, we we uh, we were previously going to bring a drummer that was in our stage stuff, but we're gonna be a duo. It's still gonna be the same show, you know." Yeah. Uh, so I'm just <laughs> <laughs> no offense. But I'm done with drummers for right now. Until until we're a fickle bunch of bitches. That's wrong. <laughs> it's like until until I can get to the point where I know that I can pay somebody reliably. Right. You know we're not at that point yet. Um, but there's a few people listening to this. There's pretty damn good drummers floating around this place, man. Yeah, we got some. Some some pretty damn good damn good drummers. I, I tried to snag Devin, but he started a band called Atos. Yep. Yeah. He's always starting a band. Damn what? Devin, man. So he's mixed a bunch it's, of my music. Uh, he's damn good at it, too. He is, he is. He, he's shown me just some of his, just some of his like, demos. We'll mm-hmm. call them demos. That's a loose term. It's like a fully fleshed out recording. Oh, yeah. And it's like, how is this a demo? What would you change aside from like, moving the song arrangement around? Yeah. I guess that's the demo part. Because yeah. <laughs> it's a <laughs> polished song. <laughs> yeah, I, I love his work. I really yeah. do. Yeah. Um, yeah, I'm actually, um, where was I? Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. I'm playing acoustic shows, right? Right. And um, so uh, Veronica's like, hey, why don't we find you a partner? Somebody that, that is like, uh, th- like, like thinks in a different way than you do, like has a different background in music. Because mine is in rock and punk and, mm-hmm. and like metal and stuff like that. Uh, and electronica, too. Right. Um, and so... Um, She's like, let's find somebody who's like different. Maybe has like a classical background or a jazz thing, or like let's let's find somebody that's like uh, I don't know. Let's maybe like find a chick or something. You know, something to just be different. And so Veronica, of course, is like, hmm, who could that be? <laughs> <laughs> so we're going. Uh, we play in Nashville. There's a songwriters round we went to. Um, cool. And we ended up winning tickets to go to Bonnaroo at the songwriters round. So we go to Bonnaroo. I bring my acoustic guitar. I'm still a little like downtrodden a bit. Sure. Uh, but there's um, there's like an open mic thing they've got going on at this place, like coffee place called uh, uh, The Grind. Oh, cool. And I've got like Grind. three sets set up there. So I go play. I'm handing out all these the CDs from my prior bands. And I'm just like getting really good reactions and stuff. Yeah, yeah. And then the last one, uh, Portugal the Man comes and takes over The Grind. Fuck. So we stay That's and watch. Wicked. It was cool. And I'm like, hey, I don't need my set. I'm going to sit here and watch <laughs> yeah. these guys play. So I watched that for a little while. And then we went over to the Grove. There's a bunch of hammocks. Uh, and it's sort of a chill place. And I started playing some of my old, like, you know, uh, my boppy sort of like goofy punk rock stuff. This girl's sitting there listening to it. And then she's like, hey, can I, uh, can I talk with you a minute? I'm, I'm writing an article for MTV.com and I wanted to interview the two of you. So like, <laughs> yes, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> so she interviews us. It's really cool. Lady's really nice. A couple of weeks later, the article comes out. It lists both of our names, and it says we're a pop duo, uh. like working, looking for like like oh, what was it? Um, like a couple uh, vying for a spot in the pop duo market, and we're like, oh, we're. We're not a duo. <laughs> She's just the smart one who knows how to talk most of the time. I'm doing real good today, guys. Um, but then, she, yeah, so she was like, "That that's weird, but let's use this as a as a as a, a jumping like a starting point yeah, absolutely. for a new project." So I started Monster Boy, um, and I was doing my solo thing. You know, I had all my like backing tracks, which mm. I make at home and everything, uh, and. Uh, we get a call from um, the Dirty Dog Bar in Nash in uh, Austin, mm. and they're like, "Hey, is this Veronica Worges? We've been like, it was like you're the only one we could find, and she's the only living one right now." Um, that's some Highlander shit. But uh, <laughs> he's like, "Yeah, we're wanting to book this band we read about in this MTV article. Come on, for, for our our our." Um, our chicks rule night here at South by uh, South, South by Southwest. Yeah. yeah. And so talk about right place, right time with that article lady. <laughs> right. That's so wild. Um, and then she's like, 
and then and then Veronica's like, oh uh, yeah, 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 sure. It's like, what you said, chicks rule. It's like, oh yeah, every band's got like, a, it's like a rock band with a girl. It's like, well, what do you play? And she's like, uh, I have a Barry sax upstairs. I play baritone saxophone. <laughs> and uh, so she gets off the call. They book it, you know. Uh, she goes upstairs and she gets her saxophone and brings it down. And she's like, hey. Good news, you're playing South by Southwest. I was like, oh, cool. She's like, bad news, I'm playing with you. <laughs> and we had like eight weeks to get ready. Uh, so she had to go like get her saxophone repadded, which took two weeks. So she's like, we have six weeks to develop a language that we can speak to, to each right, other. Stage musically. language, yep. Well, she, she's a sight reader. Oh, shit. And I'm by ear only. Yeah. Um, oh, that's tough. So we come up with a language we can speak. It's just like letters, you know, like, <laughs> yeah, no, uh, no, no notations, just letters. <laughs> yeah, I'd have to switch to hand jets, like switch to sign language. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, I figured out on, on, on Ableton, I actually, uh, because she can't play a C instrument, obviously. Right. Saxophones are either B flat or E flat. Um, so I have to go on there and I like, I like, like write out notation for stuff. If she's like got a part where she's like, help me figure out how this goes, you know? Uh, -huh. uh so then I'll do notation and like the, the piano roll. And then like, I've got a, um, uh, like a pitch mover that'll like move it up three or down two so yeah. that it fits within her, her uh, saxophone. Yeah, within, like, the range of the saxophone. Yeah. Oh, that's cool. Uh -huh. And then she could just play to that. Yeah. Well, yeah. And she like looks at that and she's like, oh, okay, that makes sense. She sees it in like the <coughs> almost like a sight reading, yeah. yeah. And so, but anyway, so we come up with a language. She plays every day, all day for six weeks. Uh, you know, bleeding from her lip by uh, the time that we're ready to go to South by. We've written parts that go with the the set we had ready for it. Uh, and she gets up on stage. She's got stage fright, of course, um, and a fear of heights. <laughs> and we're <laughs> on, heights. we're on like an eight foot tall stage. You know, um, but she did it. And then she was like, like afterwards we had like the most awkward of like, it was like first date sort of thing. Like, I, I kind of, she's like, oh, I kind of really liked playing the thing. If you, if you ever wanted to do that again, we could do that, I guess. And I was like, I, and I knew she had the fear of heights and stuff. And she was, she like, didn't want to step on my toes as like yeah, the, yeah, the yeah. writer and, yeah. and stuff. And I'm like, Oh, you know, well, if if you like, if you enjoyed it, like, I think it was really cool. She's like, maybe we could get you a real saxophonist. I was like, I don't, I maybe think like you're doing good, and maybe, and then we're like, why don't we just, we're, we're gonna fucking do this. This is this is this is our band now. You're passing her notes under the door. <laughs> <laughs> Will you be my saxophonist? Yes. Yeah. Yes or no? <laughs> oh, my sexy girl. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I mean, it was kind of like that. But um, all from an article, a mis a misinterpreted event yeah. in a park. It's yeah. cool. It was cool. What a good story. <laughs> and y'all just went with it. Yeah, we did. We yeah. did. And you know, it was like a self, not a self fulfilling prophecy, but it was just like a fulfilled prophecy. So was this last year? Uh, twenty seventeen was Bonnaroo. Twenty seventeen. Okay. And then so she started playing with me twenty eighteen, and then we got the official South by Southwest in twenty nineteen at oh, Gorin okay. Brothers. And we played like a rooftop party that year with a. Fuck we yeah. met these really cool people the first year uh, yeah. called Modern Mimes. Okay. They're a, they're a duo, a husband and wife team that plays industrial metal, and it's like awesome, like Nine Inch Nails. Yeah, he, yeah. He plays like a bass and a guitar in one instrument, and then she like does all the programming and she like does the like singing for it. That's oh, so cool. That is wicked, and they're just a two piece too. Yeah, yeah. Wow. And so we're like couple bros yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so we um so yeah we played with them the first year and the second year and then the they've come back here since I think we played them played with them in 2019 uh in little rock oh really yeah yeah i hope they come back they're like from florida yeah that's a it's a long haul yeah you get on tour for that one yeah 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 that's awesome how how so you've been how long has this band been a band because your other one broke up did you Tw say 2017? 2016. 2016. Oh, okay. So, so y'all have been doing this that long then? Yeah, I, I started late 2017 with Monster Boy. Okay. Um, and then she came in in spring 2018. And I'd played a few things. Like, I'd played... Um, 
with like Vespertine yeah, yeah. at Sticky's, which was a real cool show. Uh, and then when she came in, her first show actually before South by, she was like, "Hey Chris, Chris King, she's like, hey Chris, uh, you got any shows you could put me on so I could like shake off some some cobwebs?" And mm-hmm. he's like, "Wait, you play music now?" <laughs> <laughs> They've had a long long relationship. They've been friends since like God, 20, 2008, something like that. Oh yeah, a long when time. We started playing Shit. Rev Room. Yeah. Um, He's like, well, uh, yeah, I'll put you on a show. She's like, yeah, cool. Just something little is fine. And so they put us on with uh, Cindy Wilson from the B-52s. Wow. And <laughs> like, yeah, just a small show. How was cool like is that? A billion people there. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> it was cool. I uh, I really like that show. She's got like a synth wave sort of vibe on her own. So you still do all the, So you said it's theatrical and stuff. You got, you got, do you all have like lights and all that kind of stuff? We did when we originally started. Because hmm. um, like today I pulled up my... Veronica's out of town with the, the Tesla. Big Sprinter van. Yeah, so I've got the big Sprinter van. Oh, <laughs> oh boy, the Tesla's out. I know. <laughs> I guess I'll take the Sprinter van. <laughs> yeah, you know, just like the dichotomy of monster and boy, the monster boy, yeah. as it is, um, is, so is the dichotomy of my vehicles. I have the uh, electric vehicle, and then I have the diesel van. Right. Well, at least, you, get, you know, you can go forever in a diesel. Yeah. Go a long-ass long ass way. So when we... Started Monster Boy Lives, uh, like started doing more as a duo. Y'all we, tour a bunch? Uh, a little bit, a yeah. little bit. Uh, we, we've, you know, hit like, um, uh, you know, touring in a Tesla is actually really cool because it'll drive for you most of the way. Right. Straight on down a highway. You don't need, you know. Yeah, yeah. Stay in this lane for 300 miles. Oh, it'll pass people too. It'll, yeah, yeah. it'll do the whole thing. But yeah, we, uh, so we went up to Baltimore, Maryland. Uh, Dope. Uh, played Lancaster, Pennsylvania, like a big uh, music conference up there. Came back down, hit Nashville. Um, played in front of like really cool BMI reps. And, oh, sweet! Yeah, we played the basement in Nashville, which was Hell really yeah. great. Is that still a venue? Yeah, yeah. Is it? We Man. we played there in April. God, I want to play there pretty bad. It's it's cool. Grimy yeah. is a is a really cool dude. Yeah. Um, I've talked to him before, but he didn't have anything like available in the time frame when we were trying to go through there, you know? Yeah. It's like, damn, one of these days. Try to get a Tuesday. Oh, okay. Uh, Tuesday night is New Faces night. Oh, and okay. I've seen some great bands from out of town come through there. Oh, for sure. So we do this thing uh, with with Grimy at the basement where... <laughs> Like he booked us on New Faces night, but he thought we were local because we were like trying to get on. <laughs> <laughs> we were trying to get on a. Um, uh, we didn't just call the basement. Basically, mm-hmm. we were trying to get on a brewery festival that was going on. It was like a, like a kind of like a pub crawl, but it was all breweries, right? Um, and so he was like, "I don't have." It's like my wait list has a wait list. Yeah, but. I could put you guys on at the basement on Tuesday if you'd want to do that. And Veronica had always heard, you know, where you want to play in Nashville is at the basement. Um, same. And she's like, uh, yeah, we'll take it. Uh-huh. <laughs> Say more or uh, less. It we'll was, be there. It was really cool. Uh, so he thought we were local, but um, car, you know, will drive us there and it right. takes up like no, no fuel. <clears throat> what like, is your two piece with what? A saxophone and a laptop? Oh, no. Y'all have a lot of stuff. Oh yeah, really? Okay, where do you put all your crap at? In the, in the we bought a model. We got a model Y. Oh so okay. The frunk, the sub trunk, uh-huh. the the we lay the seats down so that she can fit the five foot tall bass saxophone. It's a it's a whole thing. So, Yikes! I, I was thinking like a Model S, like just a oh, tiny little yeah. car just oh. going down the road. Okay, no, never mind. No. I want that Cybertruck when it comes out. Then we'll Hell really yeah, be rolling. Dude. Video game car. Exactly. Incoming. I want it in in gold with a big SpongeBob on the front. <laughs> I don't think she'll let me do that, but you know. One the front's can... his mouth, so when the front opens up, it's just talking. So we yeah, we pack everything. Uh, so but this is like this is before the show. We go out there. Uh, Beck is playing an acoustic show at the Basement East, which is also owned by Grimy. Um, Fuck. So we go out there with promo materials, handbills, a scan sort of thing. Hell yeah. Because yep. the pandemic was still like, still looming. That at weird the time. thing, yeah. Yeah. 
uh, and so we're, you know, I get exhausted real quick. I'm still dealing with my cortisol stuff. Yeah, yeah. Um, they they had me on the right medication at this point, but I was still like still trying to get out of it. Yeah, yeah, it, was, yeah. it was a bit of a bear. So we go out there. We're like doing handbills. We're doing scan outs. We talk to everybody in line going in to see Beck. You know, mm-hmm. we had we had talked to Grimey, made sure everything was cool with the basement, everything. They knew we were coming. Uh, we didn't have tickets for Beck or anything. Because they like sold out in, in 15 seconds. Of course. Um, yeah. Solo acoustic Beck show. Yeah. yeah. Um, so she actually ended up, somebody in line gave her a ticket. And I went to go sleep in the car with the whole cortisol thing. Mm-hmm. Um, so she literally talked to everybody that went to go see Beck that night. And we had, and talked about our show coming up at the basement in two weeks. Um, and then That's how you do it. The next night was Tuesday, New Faces night. Next night we headed over like we stayed in Nashville with some friends, and then we went over to the basement um, proper for New Faces night, and just like promoted there and and talked to everybody there, and she ended up making like good friends with Grimey. He's like, "Why don't I know you yet?" And she's like, "Ah, maybe don't live in Nashville." And he's like, <laughs> "Like soon to move to Nashville." And she's like. No, <laughs> but I have a car that makes it real easy for me to get here. <laughs> we uh, visit sort of kind of sometimes. Yeah. yeah. And it's like, and we have friends we can stay with here and stuff. So she's like, all right, well, let, let's do the thing. So we come out to play the basement and lo and behold, like it, people start piling in and he's kind of moved us around on the, the set list mm-hmm. where we were going to be. Uh, we found out later he wanted us to put us in front of somebody he had called about us. Uh, from BMI, um, and that was really exciting. That is exciting. But so so we're like getting like it's getting more and more people. Like we get up for our set, there's literally a hundred or more people in this tiny little like Hell basement yeah. venue. It's packed, and I'm like Veronica's like yeah we gotta we gotta figure out who brought all these people and we gotta book with this band when we come back. <laughs> and we're so we're playing. Uh, and the house is rocking. People are dancing. They're really into it. They've Fuck connected yeah. with us. That's the best. And we're like, and I'm just like on a riff. I'm like, who all here met us at Beck a couple of weeks ago? Hands go up all over. Veronica's like, oh shit, we're the band. <laughs> I'm like, we got a book with us. <laughs> just be yourself, man. That's cool that y'all go on little missions too. Yeah. That's yeah. neat. That's kind of an old school tactic. We're very much guerrilla marketers. Yeah, I mean, that's, that's how we built up the, the whole FDF show thing. But, you know, Vino's used to have fresh blood. It was like that exact thing. Mm-hmm. You'd have a bunch of people in there kind of scouting around for who's what's next or who's coming through or whatever it was. Do they not still do that? No. No? I haven't done that in a long uh, time. I missed that. <laughs> it was neat for stuff like that, but it was also necessary because it was pre the end. We didn't have a way to know. Now you kind of know. You can mm. just see how professional a band is with a click. Yeah, you know exactly. I get I get why it's not there, but it was cool in the time for sure. Yeah, yeah. And going around like y'all do, that's that to me, that's like the best because it's re- it's as real as it gets. You can't fake it. Yeah, you, I mean, just and I I, t- I do tend to be a little bit awkward. I'm like weird, kind of meeting new people and stuff. Yeah. Uh you know, you give me one on one, I love talking to people. I love connecting. Right. But uh you know, like we, we go to the basement like this pr- last time that we had a show at the basement, we went to uh the Breeders show 2 weeks before. Grimey was like, "Hey, y'all want to come promote again?" He's like, "I'll get you in the door at, at the Breeders." And I'm like, "Yes, I want to go see the Breeders <laughs> for one." So you'll uh, just show out there in Nashville for like 2 weeks at a time. No, no, no. Uh, we'll go out for like a weekend. Oh, I see. And, and do our co- promo. And go home. Come back home. Gotcha. Do our work and record and whatnot and get, get our show ready. Dedication. And then go up for the show. You're like your own street team. You got to be. Yeah, that's true. Believe um, in yourself. Yeah, yeah. Absolutely. And so, you know, you just like, you walk up to people at a show that you think would they would like your music. Right. And you're just like, hey, you know, here's a... You know, Man, I can that. I talk to you a little bit about my band? You know, my wife and I, she got these big saxophones and I do all the, these like soulful vocals and I play like the grunge and rock instruments and, and, uh, this is a little bit about us and you can check out our music on this, uh, card. Hell yeah. Do you ever bring the Bluetooth speaker and a cell phone? Like want to listen? I've done that. Um, we usually do that where, uh, like festivals, outdoor festivals. And yeah. Shit. Festivals are like yeah. places where you can get a little table. Mm hmm. Um, like the Arkansas Festival and Events Association. Okay. They have like a, um, uh, 
like a thing that goes on every year. It's like a what is that? A conference. Yeah. Where they have like all the festival and we events. Have a people. festival conference. Oh yeah, you got to look up the AFEA. Um, okay. Oh, I could hook you up with all kinds of like stuff. You guys would love it. <laughs> okay. Yeah, it sounds interesting. How the fuck did I not know that? <laughs> uh, so there, there are all these. Uh, Veronica's going to come in to talk to you about this at some point. Yeah, absolutely. We're, we're starting a nonprofit for uh, like uh, music infrastructure, yeah, education, and like programs uh, that's in awesome. Arkansas, uh, and just like. Because there, there's all these musicians who are like, we need support, we need help. There's no, there's no none here for us. Well, that's why we have to leave the state and go to Nashville or go to right. you know all the good musicians. They say right. leave for other states. Um, well, there's more resources in the bigger places usually. You know, and that's what there's you just think. More money to be had. But there's a lot of resources here who feel underutilized. Absolutely. And so, like these two things can't really be true. So I see we, what you're saying. And our population is. Double what it was even just a few years ago. Yeah, that's true. That's so true. there is a lot more people. Yeah, you're not wrong. Just no one's put it together yet. So y'all trying to like yeah. be that person. Yeah, uh, we got involved in something called Artist Inc. a couple of years ago. Yeah. Uh, 2019, we went through the program and we really went through like, we're like, we're not artists, we're musicians. Like, right. we're, we're just, we're here to learn about the grants and we're going to take the rest <laughs> of the program. There were no. There was one musician, uh, and music is part of his multidisciplinary thing. Mm. Uh, Ra Howard, he's a fantastic, fantastic dude. Uh, photographer, music video guy. Uh, no, no offense, I'm not, I'm not, I'm not pitching him for music videos over you. <laughs> um, but he's, he's, uh, he's worked with like Daz and Bree and stuff. He's like really Shit, cool yeah. dude. So he was a facilitator. Shout out Daz and Bree. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Hi, Bree. I'm or Daz. I'm gonna see you in a in like a week. Uh, or I will have seen you a week ago. By right, the time right, this right. Is out. Yeah. <laughs> this is future speak. Yeah. Uh, so we so we did Artist Inc. Uh, and we went through the program, and they had us write an artist statement, talks about why you make what you make and how you make what you make. Hmm. And we're like bio. They're like, no, 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 no. You need a bio too, but you need artist statement. I get so confused with what's what. I know. They're I like, know. they're like, put a bio, and then and then and then the tell us about yourself. And it's like, didn't I just do that in the bio? <laughs> How, what's the difference? Yeah. So this is like an eight week program that tells you the difference. Yeah, that's why all we need shit like things. that. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and it's free. It's free for uh, uh, Arkansas residents. What the fuck? And where is this at? So this is through the Arkansas uh, through the Mid America Arts Alliance. Oh, okay. So they're like in Kansas City, but they're over six states. Um, we just finished up Artist Inc. in Little Rock a few weeks ago. And it was primarily, we had some dance and stuff. It had primarily for years and years just been visual artists and like, like you know, movie makers and ceramics and like oh, painters okay. and, you know, functional art and art right. installations and stuff. Um, Kevin Cressy is, was my facilitator, actually. He made, he makes these huge statues and was he, it that on purpose or just because no one knew about it, like musicians and stuff? Yeah, we, well, they. I don't want to get into too much right, why because right, right. it's a little bit political oh, I gotcha. within the organizations yeah, yeah, yeah. and stuff. But they haven't done a lot of outreach to musicians until now. Gotcha. And Veronica and I have been a big part of making that outreach happen to musicians in Arkansas. Fuck yeah. Um, and so uh, she's a facilitator for Artist Inc. now. Oh, damn. Um, and basically, and I, I just got nominated. Do you have like a thousand jobs each? <laughs> maybe. <laughs> maybe. It's taking, like we... It's taking over what we used to do in the salon has now gone a lot into artist education. Oh, okay. Um, and people think when I say artist education, we teach people how to paint or something. Mm. No, 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 no. We teach them how to look at their art as a profession and how to chase Absolutely. it. Absolutely. Like, you know. How to treat it like a business while not being like run over by it. Exactly, yeah. exactly. Finding yeah. ways for it not to drain you. Well, that's because that's the worst. When it becomes the thing, you know, this mm -hmm. becomes work. It's just... Mm -hmm. And they'll give up a hundred percent of the time. Yeah, yeah. You know, and th you know, and there's ways to strike balance too. Like, like if you need a day job that takes you out of your art, so that you can go and do your art later, mm -hmm. and then still like, like I've done this art. Now what do I do with it? How do I get it out to people? How do I make this like uh, something that that sustains me? Right. Yeah. Uh, so that's kind of that's kind of where we're at. Um, that's awesome. So Artist Inc. Uh, yeah, it just changed our lives, really. 
uh, and I didn't, we didn't expect it to, you know, we learned all the, these documents and shit. Uh, we wrote them all and then we had them all like in our Google drive, just, uh -huh. you know, and we're like, what are we going to ever do with these? <laughs> the pandemic happens. And then there's all these grants that are available to musicians like music mm. cares. The Grammy foundation has right. a thing called music cares. Uh, and they were like $2,000. You just got to fill out these documents. And we're like, Wait, they need an artist statement. They need a. They need like a curriculum vitae. They need. We have all these documents because we just did them in Artist Inc. Um, so it was like it prepared us for uh, chasing grants and stuff like that right. to, to fund not just our practice, but just like fun kind of staying alive when everything well, shut everything, down. Especially salons, like it was a zero right yeah yeah you couldn't do anything we closed it completely yeah you know so did y'all ever reopen is it just gone yeah, yeah no it's open it's open yeah veronica did some cool like orange to blue uh <laughs> gradient hair like yesterday hell yeah which is why she came out late but <laughs> it's cool that y'all could survive that i know a lot of places just couldn't you know yeah we were lucky in that we opened a second she has narcolepsy <coughs> which is why she got the tesla um, you know, she wanted something with autopilot that right. would really be Just able in to, case. yeah, keep her wow. alive if she falls asleep on the road. Um, but yeah, so, uh, we opened the salon as a second house on our property and had it renovated for special uses. So right. she like walks 10 steps to work. What the fuck? Yeah, that's awesome. And we bought the house from her godparents. So we own the place completely. They can't, you know, right. We couldn't lose the house. We don't have payments on it. What? So we just. What a good setup. Yeah. Damn. It, you know, it really... So you really are able to use all that free time to just focus on things and really dive in. All we did when the pandemic happened was was apply for grants and play music all day long. Damn. <laughs> uh, it was cool. It was cool, but it was also scary because we didn't know how long it was going to be. And then, sure. And yeah. then I lost my voice, and then it was like, oh, shit. Yeah, yeah. So now we've, like, crawled out of that. And, but through all that stuff, we ended up uh, really getting involved in, in grant writing and stuff. Mm -hmm. uh, there's a grant that's coming next year. Y'all, y'all grant babies. Everybody. I don't know anything about that stuff, man. It's a, seems, it seems, to, in my mind, it doesn't even seem real or plausible that it would ever work. Oh, yeah. So I just don't even, I don't look at it. I don't think about it. I hear people like, I got this, whatever. Yeah. I'm like, yeah. Nah. I want to tell you about the Catalyze grant. Tell me about it. Sell it, me. It is for Central Arkansas only. It is from the Mid America Arts Alliance. Um, you just it, it's kind of a, a grueling process to write it. You've got to like really talk about who you are as an artist and where all the music comes from. You know, it, it's um, Veronica was like artist statement. Why do I do what I do? Bitches and money. Isn't that why people make music? <laughs> Sex, drugs, and rock and roll, baby. Yeah, exactly. Simple. Put a Pabst Blue Ribbon cane in that envelope and mail it to them. <laughs> Freedom, bitch. <laughs> uh, but, you know, you really got to kind of dive into yourself and pull that out and bear your... They really want to know all that shit? Bear your soul to these people. It's but interesting. What what comes out of it um, what is... about something like this? Does I mean, this count as that? I, I Maybe. I know that playing music and stuff... Yeah, I mean, this really is a music does. podcast. Yeah, yeah. Um, I'm in like five bands. Yeah, and so you you could apply for it. You're an artist. That's interesting. Uh, so what comes out of it is uh, a two day. Uh, there's like 25 grant recipients. Mm -hmm. There's a two day fellowship retreat with professional development that's meant to springboard you to the next level of your career, and. Ten thousand dollars to fund your practice. Damn. And Veronica and I each got a catalyzed grant this year. So twenty thousand dollars is gonna make our live show she's she's gonna take hers and use it on upgrading our live show for like big festival requirements. Right. Uh I'm taking mine and I'm um building my studio with it. You know, her grant, she already feeds her family with her art in the salon. Right. Like she's done hair color collection photos and, and like she's done the whole art thing with yeah, it. So yeah. She's like, I feed my family with my art. I don't want that. That like I I don't need to do that. I want to be fuck. I want to be famous. That's what she wants. Hell she's yeah. like, I want a Grammy. Same. <laughs> I want I want to be on Austin City Limits and Coachella and Bonnaroo. She's like, this is this is what I want. That's from goals, music. man. Shit. And I'm like, I'm you know I'm getting involved in the sync music world. 
and some of that needs to be really fast turnaround. Oh yeah, uh, every day, damn near. If somebody's like, "Hey, we need a track that kind of mm -hmm. is in this vibe," or uh, for instance, um, right when the pandemic happened, uh, Arts and Letters podcast. Oh yeah, uh, they commissioned me to, or they commissioned us to do uh, a podcast soundscape for this horror novel author they were interviewing. And then, so I like read the book and I wrote this cool ass soundscape, <coughs> which will be out in October, by the way, <laughs> we're going to release that. That's awesome. Um, it's a se like a podcast series. Of it was just one, one, one off podcast. Just one episode. Yeah. So wow. I did like 30, 40 minutes of music for it. Okay. Uh, and God, Brad and uh, Mary Ellen are just the sweetest. Um, I love working with them. Uh, so anyway, like. I had to I had to get that around like in what two weeks time, have that recorded mix like written recorded mixed mastered right ready to go, um, and so fuck it I I did it you know but I also didn't have like uh like the world wasn't open at that time mm -hmm. so I could just have my living room trashed <laughs> I'm technically working out of like sixty square feet in my living room yeah yeah and this is all I've got for. Recording, mixing, mastering. I've got to break down all my recording shit when we're bringing in groceries. So, <laughs> so it's 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 not yeah. So my thing is like I want to have a dedicated studio space. Absolutely. Where I can have everything set up. You know, when I get to mixing, I've got my panels. Like I'm just ready to be, have professional right. products. Shut yourself and, off yeah. and really pay attention to what you're doing. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And so that's that's what I'm putting my grant towards fuck yeah so we're kind of going in two different directions but it's like it moves the same project forward exactly well one one hand washes the other you know yeah, yeah yeah that thing and then with that you get better results in your stuff you're putting online mm -hmm. spotify apple all that stuff and you just that i mean that's that's where it's all at anyway right tiktok you yeah you yeah get a good thing on tiktok one hook will catch the whole thing on fire <laughs> and then you before you know it, you are a bonnaroo headlining or whatever you know, that stuff is our wild. BMI dude seems to think we will be. He's like, don't he's like, don't get too. We just played an industry showcase for the for their our BMI rep uh, really? in, in uh, at the basement in <coughs> April. And the guy's like, oh, hey, and our friends like they have a boutique seek agency out there. So we've got we've got songs with APM and then we've got songs with like our tech sync. And there's there's a couple other guys that like come to us and say, hey, do you got something like this? So anyway, our friends in our tech sync came out to the to the showcase too, and I guess um, our rep noticed. And he's like, "Oh, don't get too comfortable with that sync stuff." He's like, "That can be cool pocket change, but your bread and butter is going to be festival circuit." Yep. And we're like, oh. "He's like, yeah, I was kind of helping this, or like, um, what do they call it? Um, developing this one band because you know BMI, they're not like a record label; they don't take money from you. Right. They they only make money if the artists make money. Right." Because they collect royalties. So, you know, this dude's fucking legit. More uh, like a management firm, right? Where they're well, just kind of like they collect royalties. guiding you. Yeah. But yeah, yeah, yeah. They've got some good. They'll be like, we like what you do. Let's connect. You're a BMI songwriter. Get song you the writer. connections. Yeah, yeah, Let's yeah. connect you with festival booking agents. Mm -hmm. So he keeps bringing out his friends to each one of these. And he said, I think we've got like two more industry showcases before he wants to put us out on tour. Showcases. Man, I didn't think that was still a thing. Yeah, I, well, I didn't either because everybody's <sighs> getting... Big off TikTok. Last showcase, yeah, last showcase. I, that's exactly right. Like last showcase, I remember playing was two thousand and three in Dallas. Oh yeah, like man, I haven't even heard that when you said you played a showcase show and then you said April. I was like, what the fuck? That's the <laughs> <laughs> holy shit. Uh, so he's like, yeah, he's like I got, yeah, I had these girls. I was, uh, I was uh, taking around. Sorry, I'm reading this. Uh, Jason Rapert eats his boogers, and I love that because <laughs> he does. Everybody knows it. Factual statement. Um, <laughs> he's like, I got these girls I've been developing, and they uh, and they they got like a sync. It was some cool pocket change. They got it with like a, a Playtex commercial. They got them like seventy five thousand dollars a year for three years. Oh, yeah. Pocket change. Pocket change. Yeah, man, that would. That's and honestly, I could live on that for seven years. Like two hundred and fifty thousand dollars is pocket change. Yeah. Uh, okay, I want that kind of pocket change. That's almost the rest of my life I could live <laughs> yeah, on that for real. You know, hey, Veronica hit real big in Dogecoin. She's got 
Which is why it says Dogecoin on the back of our Tesla. That's what she <laughs> is put that the down payment Is that with. what y'all bought it with? Yeah, yeah, yeah. that's hilarious. And she bought it two cents, you know? Yeah. Uh, yeah, and then it rocketed up to like, what, 75 cents before it finally like Sell crashed. Sell it all at 75. Oh, I wish. I wish. She sold a lot of it around 50, 60 cents yeah. and stuff. And so she, she got the, yeah. I'm like... People are always asking me, like, oh, are you into crypto? I'm like, nope, nope. My, no, wa- no, my no. wife is a crypto bro. I don't understand any of that stuff. <laughs> but she's good in the stock market. Um, That's all foreign to me. I think all that stuff's just made up and fake. We're just going along with it. You know what it is? It's it's gambling. Yeah. I mean, it is. But I don't have the money to lose to gamble. I don't mm-hmm. even like slot machines. I put a nickel in there. I'm like, fuck, I should have just kept that <laughs> nickel, man. I hate gambling. I'm not good at it. I don't want to mm-hmm. do it. No, sir. I'll play blackjack on my phone with no stakes. That's it. <laughs> I don't even know if I would do that. All right. I just stay away from it completely. Something, something in my brain just doesn't, I don't know, man. Yeah. I don't only spend money on things I really, really need or something I think will propel something I'm doing forward. That's about it. Yeah. I mean, that's smart. You know, you, it's resource management. Yeah. Keeps me poor as fuck, though. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, yeah, I mean, I don't, I, cha- I don't chase money at all. Uh, Veronica is the paper chaser. She, yeah. Her mom's a tax uh, um, tax advisor. Oh shit! And Veronica is like, like we have like a really great CPA. You know, um, gets us all the all the loopholes or whatever. Uh-huh. You know what I mean? Um, <coughs> yeah, she's really smart about money, and money scares me. Scares the fuck out because yeah. I grew up very poor. I was like, like homeless as a child. I had a lot of food insecurity type mm. stuff, uh, and that stuff kind of yep, yeah, it sort of haunts you later in life. I think I have exactly that for sure. Yeah, wasn't homeless ever, but poor as fuck. Yeah, like making rent and electricity was about all we had. You know, yeah, man, Ohio sucked when we moved to Arkansas. Oh, you're from Ohio? Oh no, no, no. Okay, so I'm I'm born in Florida. Lived in uh, Ohio and Connecticut oh, okay. and California. It Military just, kid? Uh, yeah. Okay. I was a, I was a uh, um, Navy brat. There you go. Uh, both my parents were airplane Both my parents electricians. were Navy brats. Yeah. 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 I get it. So, uh, so yeah. So, she moved here with some Air Force friends. Oh, uh, okay. Uh, and I've been here since I was like six. But um, didn't didn't spend didn't spend too much time in homeless shelters here. But in, in, in Ohio, ugh. It was it was god awful. Man, that's rough. But I tell you what was cool is my mom worked at a bar in Ohio. Uh, that was kind of her vibe. It was like <laughs> like cocktailing and stuff uh-huh. like that. Uh, dating band guys. Sure. Yeah. So I got to see like uh, Scorpions and Striper and. Oh fuck yeah, dude! I think Striper was a huge influence on the FDF. You know, like so how, how old are you? And uh, I'm 39. Okay. So you yeah, so you remember a lot of that stuff. Like and especially old school bars, man, that was a different thing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, bars were so different. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. 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 A child in a bar, man. Hey. Scorpions playing. <laughs> I and my mom dated this guy from this band called it was a Christian rock band. They they were not Riot. Christians. <laughs> they were called Loud. Loud. Love over universal destruction. <laughs> 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 but they learned how to so I I love the Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles and they yes. they learned how to play the TMNT Our generation, song man yeah they got us Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles forever yo there's a new thing coming out from them yeah I know uh, uh, the new the new not just the, the new movie. movie that's got Trent Reznor mm-hmm. uh, doing the, the soundtrack. soundtrack yeah but no they've got a, a I, they're gonna turn it into a video game but they the Peter Eastman and, and Kevin Laird. I hope I have that right. Kevin yeah, Eastman, yeah, Peter yeah. Laird. Mm-hmm. Uh, they got together again, and they wrote a new comic, uh, The Last oh. Ronin. Oh, that's right. Yeah, yeah. 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 So yeah. they're supposed. To, I heard they're going to turn that into a video game. God, I hope. Where you like I heard that you can same swap thing. between the different yes. weapon styles. God. That needs to be a movie. That is such a good story. Yeah. And do it in the style of the first film from the eighties. Yeah. From yeah. you know, what is eighty nine? Practical effects. It's so good. It's so. It's the best one still, in mm-hmm. my opinion. Mm-hmm. Damn! First thirty seconds of the movie, and you're just looking at your dad like, "Whoa!" <laughs> I was like, I still remember just being like, oh, "Raphael said, damn. Uh-huh. <laughs> and then he dies, sorta. Yeah, that movie 
fucked us all up. Yeah. <laughs> Just a bunch of six-year-olds thinking it was the cartoon. We go to this real movie. Yeah. With all the drama, and then they kill Shredder in a fucking garbage <laughs> truck. <Yeah. laughs> like, dude. You know, like, like, I always imagined. The like, 80s were wild, man. I went back and watched it later, but, like, when I was a kid, I thought there was, like, blood on the little... No, nah, I just... Yeah, you know, it's just the rust and shit. It's I thought it was blood yeah. too. Yeah, scared the hell out of me. Yeah, but I loved it because it made you feel something. Exactly. Yeah, TMNT three did not do that. It made me feel anger <laughs> and hatred towards the people who fucked up my beloved franchise. Like, don't get me wrong, I love feudal Japan. I I, I watch, you know. Uh, sure, just not that version. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Like, like I I enjoy some Inuyasha <laughs> um, on occasion. <laughs> But yeah, I'm like, no, don't put Ninja Turtles in there. <laughs> Dude, they almost ruined that whole thing. That and that stupid tour they went on, the musical tour, almost ruined the I, whole thing. I went to it. No, you didn't. I did, in Pine Bluff. What the fuck? At the mall or where? There was like some convention center there. Um. Wow. <laughs> it, yeah, I, it, was, it was cool, but it was weird. Because... Um, yeah. Well, were they terrifying? They, I mean, you go back and look at videos. It's like, this would terrify me as a child. <laughs> this would not make me happy. It made me feel like it, it was very much like a stage play meets uh -huh. like, a, it was almost like Disney on ice a bit, yeah. you know? The, or, little, the little rubber mouths and like they're holding instruments, but they're not actually playing anything. Yeah, 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 yeah for sure. And the instruments are like giant plastic things uh -huh. that don't even look like instruments. Yeah. <laughs> I remember this pretty vividly now. <laughs> Sorry to try and bring up past traumas. <laughs> yeah, uh, ah! <laughs> no, no, traumas is how we write songs. Exactly. <laughs> what was the first time you knew you were going to write a song? When they pushed Shredder in that garbage truck, <laughs> man. <laughs> really affected me. But yeah, it, I mean, it really did, though. Like, oh no, it did. It, it for sure cool. left scars. It was a dark ass movie for children. Yeah, yeah. That if you made that shit today, parents would be like. What the fuck? They'd be like, get in the helicopter. Or because, you know, they're helicopter parents. Yeah, okay. yeah. I don't know. Does Gen Z have helicopter parents? Or was that just know. millennials? I don't know. I was a latchkey kid, man. We didn't have nothing. You just come home, cook your own, yeah. whatever the fuck. Yeah. Hopefully they'll be home in time for dinner, you know? Sometimes you lock yourself out of your house and you got to go oh, to your neighbor's dude. house or and hang out with the weird the kid. Or your buddy down the street, yep. Yeah. <laughs> I, oh, you know, you say that. We definitely had that kid. I think we all did. Yeah. I mean, I grew up uh, in a trailer park, like on the outskirts of Jacksonville. Okay. So. <laughs> definitely a scene. Yeah, definitely. <laughs> definitely the weird kid next I grew door. up in a trailer, but not in a park, luckily. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. It was yeah. on a piece of land. Okay, yeah. you know. So nice. I still hate trailers, just in general. Do you? Yeah, yeah. Like, I go in one, I'm like, ah, uh, no, this is not me. I feel poor. <laughs> <laughs> My Tesla would never be in a fucking mobile home driveway. <laughs> hey, you know, I mean, I'm actually a huge fan. I got, I've been in one my whole life, so I'm just in one. Yeah, you yeah. Know? yeah. I just like it. Well, I uh, so um, Veronica bought her house, and it had an in-law house out back, right, from her godparents. It's where she grew up. It was just in North Little Rock, uh, and just a. You would say that we're in a lower income neighborhood mm -hmm. with like a mixed populace. Yeah, uh, which people. Some people freak out about, and I like to call it a, a, an asshole filter. Like oh, if yeah? you're like, oh, no, there's black people here. I'm like, well, my neighbor Donald is fucking cool as shit. So <laughs> if you don't want to come here, well, fuck you. That's fine. Yeah. Well, you could be my neighbor. You know, he does meth. He meth. Stays, he's up all hours of the night. Yeah. He's real fun. All my neighbors smoke weed, but that's so, it. <laughs> sometimes you'll hear him revving his engines up. <laughs> Because, you know, it's 3 in the morning. you got to get that old Camaro going, man. Yeah, yeah. Oh, no. That's the perfect time to mow the lawn. <laughs> Dude. 3 in the morning with that a head shit. spotlight. You, know? <laughs> you say that shit. I have, I have waken up. I wake up early. Yeah. And I have gone outside to, you know, take my dog out, take a piss off the porch, and seen some wild shit Ugh. more than once. You're just like, hey, buddy, come on back inside. Let's, we're not going to uh -uh, yeah. and lock the door. <laughs> No, 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 no. Yeah. I don't know why this dude's out here mowing the lawn in his underwear <laughs> at three in the morning, but he is. Well, they burned the house down. Oh, with meth? Oh, yeah. Okay. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Well, then they left, didn't get caught, came back, relit the house on fire to destroy the evidence. Oh. Then got caught out in the woods. But okay. then the, the, the children moved into a van oh. next to the property, and that's 
that's who I get to deal with. Okay. It's a very interesting setup. So van living. Uh-huh. Yeah. Is there a river anywhere around here? Well, or? no, it's <laughs> 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 No, it's uh it's one of those do you remember there was like this short window where they made these van RV things? I'm sure you've seen them as if if at your age they were definitely around for a time. They had the sloped fronts. It was like yeah, an RV, yeah, but yeah. not an RV. Like yeah. what a Winnebago, like what more became a Winnebago. They were just yeah. bigger vans at it. It's that thing. So Tiny it's old Winnebago's. as shit. Yeah. So it's old as shit. And you're like cramped in it's it. It's like a Dodge, I think. Uh, yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. It's got like a bed and a thing over the roof, you know, a cab over the roof. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, my goodness. <clears throat> yeah. It's a. That sounds fun to live in. You know, but we I, got. I'd take a trailer over there. It's just that, that one. <laughs> it's just that one. It's just that one neighbor. Yeah, yeah. And the rest of the neighborhood's dope, man. It's a dead end, quiet, except yeah. for that one guy. And it's only, he only gets going when he's fucking, you know, heated up, tooting fucking Woo-hoo. meth all night. Yeah. <laughs> that is one thing I have never done. Never, I don't think never I really can't really. I do coke. I'd do that for fun just to see what the hype's about, but I'm see. afraid my heart would explode. Ugh. Uh, everything else, I, no, no heroin. I wouldn't yeah, no, heroin. no, no, no. Never again. It's real musician's no, drug. <laughs> never again. No, no I, I never did heroin. You know, the thing is, it's like, um, I have done many things that I won't admit to directly, <laughs> yeah. but, uh, but needles was never my thing. And I'll tell you why. I like needles too much. Tattoos. Tattoos. Yeah. I don't. I have. I've, just, I've got like this one. I got one on my butt cheek. Um, <laughs> <laughs> Is it a smiley face? It's the flaming death fairy's heart. Oh, okay. It's a little, yeah, the, yeah. The horns. It's got the horny heart, um, <laughs> which I always forget about until I'm at the gym changing. <laughs> um, but yeah. Uh, but yeah, I love piercings and I love needle and I and when I was like in high school, edgy kid or whatever, I would just like put the safety pins all oh, the way yeah. up my arm. Yeah. Pierced my all oh, everything with fucking safety, safety pins, pins everywhere. Everywhere. I remember those kids. Yeah. Yeah. I graduated in two thousand two. Same. So yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, we have we have all the same tropes, I'm sure. Uh, high school, yeah. Yeah, I had hair down <clears throat> to my waist. In and uh, and were your friends just blatant drug users like in the middle of class? Uh, yes, I had and I was not one, I didn't smoke weed <laughs> until I was like 19. I had or, a buddy just mad, no, tripping, 18, yeah. mad tripping on LSD one time. You remember those uni ball pins? Yeah, the really nice ones. And he just took that and just stuck it, stabbed his fucking leg like 20 times. He goes and he starts laughing. He goes, Isn't that cool? No, like and he's just in outer space, dude. It is not. And he's cool. looking at me. You know those that LED, that LCD or LCD LED, uh, that LSD face. Yeah, Their eyes yeah, are just yeah. like you can tell they're in a different yeah. dimension. And I was like, dude, you're fucking crazy. This was in computer lab, by the way. <laughs> he's just, and I was like, what the fuck are you doing? Yeah, I was the kid. Who, uh, now uh, his name was I, Kyle. I got taken into uh, the 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 pres the president the principal's office, <laughs> and they were like they're like shining lights in my eyes. We know you were smoking marijuana before <laughs> class. I'm like I've never smoked marijuana in my life, and they're the like they're, and like they're like you're you're moving your eyes too slow, and I'm like you, I was like are you guys gonna call my fucking mom or what? <laughs> They tried to get me for smoking one time, dude. And yeah. I, I did smoke. I've been smoking. Mo- I smoked more of my life than I have, like, than not. Yeah. Uh, they tried to get me one time because I would drive my truck, and my truck was, like, just, it was, like, for racing. So it was loud as fuck. Yeah. And I was always causing shit, doing burnout stuff. And I was a problem child. And he was like, oh, Yo, you're smoking out here. And I was like, I'm leaving. <laughs> He's like, yeah, but you're smoking. He's like, I was like, I don't even have cigarettes on me, which, I mean, they were in my truck, but yeah. I hadn't made it to my truck yet. Yeah. And he's like, well, what's that cigarette there? It was a butt in a puddle. Like, and it was like the paper was falling off. It was like old as shit. Been yeah, they're like, that's what, th- three days ago? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Mine. I was like, dude, you suck. <coughs> oh. You all right? Goodness me. <laughs> Pardon my French. Wait, I didn't say any French. Consume tight, or however you fucking say it. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I, I was just like to go, you sneezed. <laughs> so with this grant thing, are y'all going to start holding classes for it? Are y'all going to be the facilitator of this uh, movement? Well, or like so we've actually like a, a we've done hall? a couple of classes through the Arkansas Arts Council. Uh, like you hosted them yourself, Veronica. Oh, Veronica. she's very much the like she's really good at teaching. I'm getting there because gotcha. I I do work with the Mid America Arts Alliance and and Arkansas Arts Council as far as like tech stuff. 
So I'm the guy running the computer, running mm. the slideshow, making sure that everything is getting pushed out to where Is this like Zoom stuff? We've done Zoom stuff, but we've also done live. Like we did a, a talk at um, uh, Whitewater Tavern. Oh, um, okay. A few, it was a few months ago. Uh, oh no, it was in, it was in October. Okay. And this is really interesting because I went to the Mutants of the Monster Fest. Uh, the one that just happened? Yeah, yeah. Yeah. That Wake played and yeah. stuff and Mammoth Caravan. So. Shout out to them. I fucking love you, Mammoth Caravan. Go cop Caravan. their CD, Mammoth. Oh, yes. Change the camera, Kurt. <laughs> yeah. Go comp their uh, album. I think it's been out for a while, but now it's on CD. So Brandon was at our talk. Too. Mr. Ringo? Mr. Ringo was Love at our him. talk. Yep. Uh, and he was like, he stopped me at Mutants of the Monster. And he was like, when you guys, when you guys did that, that talk about uh, how to successfully sell out venues and make good partnerships with your, your local venues thing at Whitewater, he's like, I went and I took notes and we did all that shit and it's been fucking cool. He's like, I have seen success from it. So uh, I, I was so glad to hear that. Because I had gone to see Mammoth Caravan, uh -huh. and I was blown away by how fucking cool and sludgy and like how polished their their show. Like they like I know they're new, but they really. But they've been gigging hard. They should yeah. they shouldn't have been that early in the lineup. You know they were they were fucking good. Really killing it. Yeah. And uh, and so and I was like oh shit. <laughs> <laughs> um, so. Yeah, so uh, me and Brandon sort of recently became friends over that. I think that was pretty cool. Yeah, that's a good friend to have. But yeah, we did a talk, and, and there were people there. Uh, and so we're kind of like, as far as the outreach goes, we're like, you can't just say, hey, Arkansas musicians, there's money at the table for you. Mm. Come to the table. No, you have to say, this is what a table is. Because Arkansas musicians have primarily not all of us like but anybody in rock metal pop anything that's like commercially viable mm -hmm. has generally been shunned by any of the grant programs and that's not the case anymore right uh, and generally we've just been like screwed over by bad deals and like and like oh, yeah. bad actors in the music yeah. scene well, the music industry is just yeah. one it's just filled with them it is. I think it that's is. why you don't see a lot of if even people that make it on all the genres, they just don't look back. They don't mm -hmm. really lend out. They don't really do much once they pop. Yeah. Just and it's for that stuff because they you'll just lose all the money or something. Somebody will take advantage of you. And there's so many examples of it. Was it like Tony Braxton, like manager, just like oh, took all yeah. of her money, all of it, all of it, yeah. And that's it. Oh, you just don't have the money anymore because you allowed this person to be your accountant so you just don't yeah, have it exactly that's fucking crazy it's 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 a wild ass world out here yeah it is but like so so arkansas musicians have been kind of like kicked dogs you know, well, like you, you, know. you come up and you tell them hey there's free money and they're like what's the catch I play shows for free i don't <laughs> <laughs> yeah we had this one group and uh and they were like so hey, you're talking about like all these grants and stuff. Well, like when you get one, how long before you have to pay the grant back? And we're like, like this is <laughs> yeah. I mean, it's it's funny, but it's also not funny because you're like, oh shit, there's people out here who are like scared to oh, yeah. get involved with something that will better their career. Um, and I get it because I've been there. I've had to turn <laughs> down deals that would have like raked me over the coals. Right. Luckily, I have Veronica. She's very smart. You she, see those kind of things. Yeah, she yeah. sees that coming from a mile away. Um, well, and once you get burned once, even if it's a minimal amount, like going to a show with a guarantee and not getting paid, you're like, all right, fuck all that. Yeah, you just yeah. put it all out of your mind. Uh, oh, and those like what gorilla mark or no gorilla productions where oh, they would have you dude. pay for like a fifteen minute set. Fuck those yeah, fucks. Yeah. yeah. No. God, I remember when that was going on. I don't know if that's still a thing. I hope not. What I want to do, and this is a little bit separate from the grant thing, but it's yeah. like, what I want to do is like <clears throat> break that battle of the bands concept, like the sort of like uh, thing that kind of got built up. Oh, yeah. Uh, it, and it was like really big 2008 to 2012 or sure. so, where it was like, you got to come out and support my band and my band only. You Everyone can't cheer for these other smokes. people. Yeah, yeah. Dude. Oh, and yeah. that is toxic as fuck for mm -hmm. the music scene. And that breeds competition that 
isn't there. Like, I haven't seen that kind of behavior in a while. It's good. There's a few people that will show up to a show just for the hang, and I get that. You know, they'll, they'll just be outside, and even I'm guilty of that. Fucking old, man. I've been to a thousand <laughs> shows. Sometimes I'm tired as hell, and I just want to see my friends. Mm-hmm. But the music is just, you know, you've been. I work construction, so it's like, I'm tired. But I want to hang out. I yeah, want to be yeah. there. I want to support. I'm here. I'm just not in the room. Yeah, yeah, you know, yeah. I get it. But, you know, yeah, so it's good to... We haven't seen that a lot, but, like, you know, uh, just the idea... There's still kind of the idea there a little bit that there's competition for resources or that resources mm. are finite. Right. Uh, for instance, like, I had some friends that were on something called the Arts on Tour roster. Okay. Through the Arkansas Arts Council. Uh, and what that is, is it's like a program that allows you to, if you're booking at like a fine, like a, um, like an institution, like a, um, like you get a gig at a university or something like that, mm-hmm. or you play in a rural area or you play like, uh, like, I don't know. One of those, those things. rural area shows can be wild. Yeah. I've never had a bad one. I don't think. I don't think I have never even, never yeah. have either. You think we're gonna die because you're lost? You're looking for someone's fucking barn. <laughs> <laughs> or, or uh, for instance, like Newport has a, um, a Delta Music Festival. Okay. Like so, all these like festivals and Is that these like a blues like, thing. Uh, no, 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 it's regular no. like all kind of music. Just every genre, multi. Okay, cool. Yeah, we played with uh, De France was up there, and it mm. was us, and uh, uh, had some other friends that that live up there. Uh, Newport. Oh yeah. Uh, they've got the, 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 oh, they've got this cool new place they opened, like Angry, Angry Possum. No, <laughs> shit, I can't remember. It was such a cool place. I wish I could plug it. I hope it is Angry Possum. <laughs> <laughs> um, but yeah, it's like a cool little like just like corner uh, restaurant and bar, and they've got like a uh, they've got a place for bands to play and all Fuck that stuff. Yeah. But I think it is Angry Possum. We're gonna go up there and play. Um, and they've got possums everywhere. Anyway, so you you go and you play these things, and then those institutions that that bring you in can uh, apply for a grant through the Arts on Tour roster to get anywhere from 40 to 60% of your pay reimbursed. So you get paid 40 to 60% per, like, more. We've made $1,500. What off of the a fucking, fuck? Off of an hour-long university gig. Wow. And... And they got fifty percent of it back. Damn! And so they paid. They had budgeted seven fifty. We said, "Hey, we're on the arts on tour roster." They're like, "Oh, okay, cool. We can pay you fifteen hundred. <laughs> so it's yeah, like this. These are the programs that are out there and available. So I had a friend on the arts on tour roster, uh, and we were friends for ten years or something like mm-hmm. that. Never told me a fucking thing about it. We played shows together all the time. It to, like, because he thought if you get on there, that's less for me. Is yeah, that what you're talking exactly. about? Exactly. Yeah. And I'm telling all y'all right now, Arts on Tour roster through the Ar- Arkansas Arts Council. Look into this stuff because, you know, there's application processes. There's vetting processes. Mm-hmm. You've got to be good to a certain extent. They've got to uh, approve the thing. But these these programs are out there, you know, and, and I'm just I'm sick of seeing people hoard them. You know, so yeah. so we kind of have to get to this That's point where cool, like, man. hell yeah, where we like say, all right, there's these things, and I promise this is money from the government, this is money from like art donors and like the National Endowment of the Arts going through Mid America Arts Alliance and the Arts Council and all these 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 funders right. that are there to help you and they're not here to hurt you or or to like like take your your art from you like like right. maybe some of these other and maybe the yeah. fact that it sticks it in with all the other stuff too gives it some legitimacy in there in other people's eyes. Yeah. You yeah. know what I'm saying? Like oh it's art. It's, it's all art. But yeah. I think everything's art really. If you're badass at pressure washing, <laughs> that's an art cuz I know a lot of fucking people that can't do that. I tell you what you do. You think you can. You so you do it. You do your pressure washing, you do some like pictures and stuff pictures, like that. Pictures do that. Yep. And then you, you uh, collaborate with a photographer all of a sudden you have an art collection that you can take to a yeah. gallery. Or put that on it, make it a, t- you know, these guys that cut lawns on TikTok. Oh, uh, yeah, yeah. You know, or or I, I do it through YouTube, but you just get lost in that shit. <laughs> I got to work all day and then come home and watch people work. It's fucking ridiculous, <laughs> man. My brain is so dumb. <laughs> Ugh, that's, that's fucking crazy. Yeah, you're, everything you said I have no idea about, so that's cool as fuck. Well, you know, uh, we're not there yet, but we've, uh, we, we, start, we've but started our... 
our work opening our nonprofit. We've got our lawyer. We're going to meet with the CPA. We're getting seed awesome. money. We're talking to the governor's office and the Wind Rock Foundation mm-hmm. and the Waltons and stuff. Um, you have fun with that, some of that money down here, Waltons. That's, that is <laughs> the point. Because y'all got Fayetteville locked the fuck up. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And we want to close that divide, too, between yeah. Northwest Arkansas and Little Rock. It'll get there. Uh, I, I, you're absolutely right. I've been seeing a lot of bands There's, doing both. So one thing that we want to do is we want... Veronica's going to talk to you about this in so much more detail. But I'm going to give you like a little bit of a rundown. Yeah, yeah. Cliff's notes it. So when we tour in Texas... And we first set up some um, like so far sounds gigs out there, mm-hmm. like all acoustic stuff, hidden venues, hidden bands. You pay, you get a ticket and you find out where you know what city it's in. But you find out I the actual that. venue like two days before the show. Hell yeah! And uh, you get crows on some shit like that. And you that. don't know who it is, but you know it's like cool bands because they vetted them. You know, like Queen Herbie and Lizzo and and Billie <laughs> Eilish have done these. Hell you know, that's yeah. kind of some of the things that got them sort of in the limelight a little bit. Okay. So we're going out there. Um, I'm trying to get it here in Little Rock. We They need staff for it. So anyway, uh, so we go out there and we're like, all right, we want to do promo. We want to talk to radio stations. We kind of want to do stuff. Let's get into the slog of data crawl that you do. Like when you come to Arkansas, how do you contact this, this venue? Who knows? Go yeah. Look, look it up on the website. Yeah. Maybe Good it's luck. there. <laughs> yeah. Maybe, you know, you don't know the person's name. You don't know how they like to be contacted. So even showing up, you might you might not get a fucking good answer. Exactly. Like, yeah, no, it's tough. Yeah, you, you just sort of like hand them your card mm-hmm. and blindly hope, you know? No. Which no. is not going to happen. So Texas Music Office is an offshoot of the uh, governor's... Um, uh, it's like it's like a governor thing. Okay. Um, and basically, what it is is a website that is self serve. You go on there. You're like, I'm looking in this area for this type of music. Uh, I need venues that I can contact. It gives you the list of people to contact. It tells you how they like to be contacted. Uh-huh. Uh, here's a list of radio sessions that'll interview you. Here's a list of publications you can send a press release to. You know. Uh, and here. Damn. Yeah. And so, and like. We want to do that, and we actually are in contact with the uh, Texas Music Office. for. They've got, like, a, a training on how to make this for other states. What the fuck? Oh, that's badass. So, um, yeah, we, we've gotten word through our friends at the transportation. Uh, not transportation. What's, what's that? Mm. Um, uh, where people come to your state. Tourism department. Oh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> that, that they're, they're looking to fund something like this right now. No shit. Because... We need it. Georgia's doing it. Tennessee is doing it. And we got to get there. So everything around us is starting to do it. Yeah. Like the last. We want to get there before Louisiana or Missouri, Mississippi. Yeah. Yeah. We want to get there before them. Um, And I think it basically like, so we go on there and like, we did like what would be two, three weeks of, of digging work in three hours. Nice. And we're like that, that would make it super attractive to come to Arkansas. Right. To for festival and events association bookers here, <coughs> right now some of these festival and events people are going on Facebook. Hey, do I do I know any bands that would want to play at my festival uh-huh. on fucking Facebook? <laughs> <laughs> Which is dead as fuck anyhow. Yeah, yeah. And it's like you and so you're just getting that pushed out to the few friends that see it. That's right. No, so you can go to this website, you can search for bands in this genre, and then like. Narrow it down to whatever fucking city or whatever fucking region, you know. Fuck yeah. yeah. We want to make this like where uh, it's along the lines of what Texas is, mu- Texas Music Office does, but even more. Where we're bringing in stuff like if you're in if you're an out of town band and uh, oh shit, uh, my my headstock broke off uh, and I've got like three hours to the show. Where's the locus? Where's the the closest local luthier? Mm. Where's the closest local? So it's that that yeah. in depth. Wow. Yeah, to the point where you can find people who are music adjacent. You know, people okay. who are there like music services. If that makes any sense. Damn, dude, that would be amazing. So yeah, that's, shit, that's what we're working on. Y'all are busy as fuck. It's good. It's it is good. good. To be no, busy. it's great. Yeah. They definitely have that mindset. Sound like a fucking power. Y'all are like a power couple. Yeah. We're in bands. We do the thing. She works at the thing. I, we're all at the house together. Yeah. We're trying to make Arkansas fucking have this crazy mapped out 
That's badass. Dude, that, that, that sounds sick as fuck. I'm trying to process all that. It sounds like a lot of fucking work. It is. Yeah. But we're, you know, we're trying to, part of, like, starting it as a nonprofit insulates it from the government. Right. So that nobody can go, oh, I'm defunding you. Mm-hmm. Like, no, you're not. <laughs> right. You know, like, well, so we watched, um, we initially pitched it to the Heritage, like Arkansas Heritage which they're over the Arkansas Arts Council. And they were like, this sounds like a great idea. And I know people like at the time it was Hutchinson was in, in mm-hmm. office. Yeah. And um, it's like, yeah, he would love this, but, but he, you know, uh, the race hasn't been run, but they're already like, they're already transitioning everyone over to like oh, Huckabee's okay. teams. Right. And it's like, and in three Three months, four months, we're probably just like she's probably gonna fire me. Who's like the head? Right, of, right, right. You're yeah. He was the head of, of heritage. Now, Arkansas Arts Council is insulated from that, so nobody got changed over there. But in but Arkansas the, but Heritage, then it owns that is yeah. Everything yeah. gets swiped through. Fuck, man. Like so, we we were. So do you have to just go back and just kind of be like, maybe these people are cool or. Yes. Yeah. So yeah. you have to like but, redo the whole process. But we've we've heard through our friends at the tourism department that Sanders wants to um, wants to fund something like this. Oh, okay. So I'm I'm reasonably. Uh, well, that's good. That's uh, one good thing. Yeah, yeah. I'm optimistic. Sure. That that they're gonna like that. Um, I mean, if not, I think we're only. Yeah. It, it, I think it's gonna work out well. Hell yeah. So part of it, like though, is is making sure that we don't starve. <laughs> yeah, while we're yeah, doing yeah, all yeah, this yeah. because it is not lucrative to just connect people with other people no so, it's not so part of the seed money is giving us like a, a bit of a salary buffer yeah, yeah. just a buffer yep because i get it we're, we're you know we don't want to add extra jobs like we're already doing art education right we're already playing with our band that's the thing about most artists like man if you if i could eat and have the electricity mm-hmm. on I would work endlessly on the things I do. Yeah. Like this kind of shit, dude, I would do, I'd be in this fucking studio every day if my internet and electricity was there and I got to eat food. Yeah, yeah. I would do this every day. Yeah, that's not where we're at yet. I know, I <laughs> but, know. <laughs> but maybe you're working on it. Yeah, we are working on it. Yeah. So if we get the nonprofit started, we're going to have, um, we're going to have just a little, like basically like have money for us to live on and then we're going to travel the state Signing every That's venue, awesome. yeah. signing every person, like tracking down every band, making like making That's connections wicked. to get them on the site, and then um, our, and then our next phase is is all right. Start up the music edge or like the artist education programs for high schools and colleges, uh-huh. and then like and then you know like Veronica and I kind of want to be the teachers for the first round, and then we're gonna find artists like music artists. Mm-hmm. And that are that are are good with with teaching, and we're gonna offer them positions where they can teach for so much, you know, right per hour for like four to however many hours the programs are. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And we're gonna connect them to that through the Arkansas Arts Council. Damn. And then yeah, so it's like a hell of a mission statement. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> we've got we've got a ten year plan. You can tell that you've put a lot of time into it. So that's 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 yeah, man, that's wild. Holy shit. I mean, here's hoping it works. Yeah, yeah. I can fall flat yeah. on my face, but shit, I've done that before. I mean, but you don't know if you don't try. Yeah. Fuck. And that's something really fucking cool. If that does work, that's huge. Yeah. And the cool thing is, that's is a that big step in the right direction. At a certain point, it it works itself. Right. You know, like, like oh yeah, we, at some point that thing's just a program that's just on. Yeah. Yeah. You know, it, it, there's like, and like we've connected people to the other people, and then like, right. like, all right, we we've got these programs, and we're probably still gonna sit and write the programs together. But I mean, we've already written one for high school students to talk about the middle class of music. Hell yeah, where you're not like, uh, you know, the like band teachers and stuff. Right. Like they sort of give you this idea, uh, not the band teachers, but like you get this idea in general. Um, that if you're in music, you're either like post Malone or you're homeless. Ugh, and then that's like, the American <laughs> Idol of everything. Exactly. I, I can't stand that shit, man. There's a whole range. Like I've like I got friends that uh, perform um, like in in like like they, they like they do have symphonies or whatever. Yeah. But they're just like they'll go in and do like music scoring 
uh, session playing oh, in, yeah. in, in studios. Well, that's and huge for that kind of stuff. For like, that for that life, if you're like a classical instrumentalist, like mm-hmm. session work is your bread and butter, really. Unless and, you get in on an orchestra. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And that's that's the thing. It's like there's all these different jobs yeah. in music that aren't that are music adjacent. <coughs> Sometimes right. you're not even playing, but something you know, there's a lot of jobs in playing music. Uh, but there's there's ways to you know, like there's like pathways to start that as early mm-hmm. as being in high school. You know, Veronica, her passion is like, you know, she picked up her horn 20 years later and she's like, I didn't know how, how much of my artistic soul I was missing. Oh, dude. From not having this in my life. Fucking, what, <clears throat> I think we went like a month, two months during the pan, like the start of the pandemic. And mm-hmm. I was like, I'm going to fucking die. I cannot not play music. I can't yeah. do it. Yeah, we had to figure some shit out. So we did a bunch, we did some live streams and stuff, and started practicing. We luckily we had a giant fucking warehouse. Yeah, so we could all be, you know, distanced away from each other. And we wore masks for the first little bit until everything started kind of you know everybody's yeah. figuring everything out and shit. <clears throat> Damn, when did you start playing music? Oh, let's see. Uh, I was six. Damn, I was six. that's two in a row. That's two, two, <laughs> two people in a row started playing music at six. That's awesome. Yeah. So you're a multi instrumentalist. Yeah. yeah. I started on violin at six. Played in Fuck. front of. I played in front of Governor Clinton. No shit. <laughs> at the Park Plaza. Did he have uh, a saxophone with him? I don't know. I don't remember. Oh, okay. I just I remember just being part of the thing. Yeah. <laughs> Can't play for shit now, but um, yeah, I picked up guitar at eight. Um, picked up bass at ten. Picked up French horn at 11. Damn. Uh, I'm not real good at playing a drum set. Uh, mm. I can play some things, but I picked up drum like programming and uh-huh. uh, and like orchestration. In the box stuff. Yeah, yeah. Like through the computer MIDI. <sighs> I picked up um, I think MTV, that's a fucking art form all itself, MTV man. Music Generator on PlayStation 1 <laughs> in like 1999 or 2000. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and I made albums of techno music on there <laughs> that I still have to this day. Uh-uh. DJ Tomato. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. It's tomato if you're British. <laughs> oh, yeah. It's DJ Tomato. Um, <laughs> so, yeah. So I, that's where I got initially uh. into, like, drum programming and orchestrating, like, uh, or, like, comp- composition. PlayStation 2 got you into fucking... Yeah. Nice. That's, I still have a copy of it, actually. Um, yeah, so weird. Years later, um, had my punk band or whatever, uh-huh. and I had a, a guy in the punk band, my drummer at the time, who had gone to school and like learned a lot of like recording industry or like recording engineer stuff. Oh right, right. Setting up mics, getting all the, mm-hmm. the levels, recording, and then uh, do. He didn't really know much about mix master, but he was real fucking lazy. So he showed me. It'd be like that. Yeah, so he showed me how to do all this stuff uh, before he. Uh, well, I don't want to mention what he did, but we had to let him go real, sure. real quick. Um, and uh, so I was like, "Oh, now I have all this information on how to mm-hmm. set up and and record." And I had bought this like, uh, oh goodness, a Tascam sixteen forty one. So I had the, like the inboard shit. I had like the eight eight mics. Oh, you, okay. And you could power and unpower, or like power four in a, like a block of four at a time. Right. And then two balanced mic or two balance lines and sixteen unbalanced lines, so I could record fucking anything. Buku's the shit. Yeah, that's a lot of inputs. And my friend gave me uh, a cracked copy of Ableton Live, <laughs> and I was like, "Holy shit, this is literally just MTV Music Generator on steroids." <laughs> So uh, that's where my and then like then then I just fell in love with the 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 composition stuff of like uh-huh. oh I could play this and 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 put them all together. Well, you so know. you got one of those brains. Yeah, yeah, yeah. which is good because um, I don't know I I do a lot of that like free association. So when it comes to like like lyrics, I just like I don't know I don't pay attention to what I'm writing. Mm-hmm. I don't know what it means until Veronica's like, hey, this is what you were singing about. It's kind of spewing out of you. Yeah, yeah. yeah. In fact, we did this song called uh, Paper Cup. It's like our island country song. Okay. With like uh, Jason Lee Hale on slide guitar. Nice. Um, And uh, it's got a bit of a like hip hop sort of like inspired drums and stuff. 
but it's a country song. <laughs> Hip hop country? Yeah. Not not you not quite. You'd not be surprised. I'll, yeah. I'll send you a link to it. Yeah, uh, but do. it's like uh, so I had the track and everything, but I had no lyrics. And I finally got the backing tracks and everything set up at midnight the night of the show when we played at Stickies. Or when I played at Stickies, this was 2017 by myself. Oh, okay. And uh and we were and I had to get it was like we were playing for I was opening for Vespertine and like so like I don't have lyrics. I got nothing to go on. Veronica's like, just figure it out on stage. You'll be fine. <laughs> I'm freaking out. I get up there. Luckily, somebody was filming it because literally oh, okay. what I sang on stage out of fucking nowhere is what's on the album. Isn't now. it wild when that happens? And it's and it's good and it's like coherent, surprisingly. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And uh, I love it when that happens. And man. Veronica's like, oh yeah, you wrote that about your mom. And I'm like, oh. <laughs> It's not a nice song. <laughs> I blacked out. What happened? Yeah, for real. For real. But yeah, no, I, I've got one of those like weird free association brains. So yeah. like sometimes I'm like, oh, how about instead of a, a bass, we put a saxophone here and then support it with like a hip hop sub, mm. you know? And you have all the abilities to make that a, a reality. Yeah. See, I'm like, man, this would be dope with some horns. I guess we'll never know. You're like, I don't know what those horns would sound like. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I got all the stuff. I have a DAW. I have like 250 gigs of shit to choose from, but oh, yeah, I yeah. don't know fuck all about any of that. What's your, what's your DAW? Uh, Logic. I have Mac, so it just makes sense. Cheap. It's like 200 bucks, yeah. and it comes with infinite shit. I have paid $1,100. You know, for like, Ableton Live, like just the just the built-in stuff. Plus now with the iPad integration, yeah, where you yeah. can use it in real time with it. Holy fuck! I mean, it is wild. I so with my studio, with my with my studio money, I am, studio money. <laughs> I am buying a Mac Studio. Nice. Um, that's what I wanted, man. But I'm gonna put Ableton on it. Yeah, because <laughs> that's what I know. I mean, it's what you know. I yeah. think that's the, like the thing about DAWs. It's like. Just find the one that your brain goes, I like this, and just use that one. Because mm. they're all doing the same shit now. I did I did try Logic at, um, I don't know if you guys know Brian Knight. Uh, not not Little Rock Frets, Brian Knight. Oh, okay, no. No, this is this is Brian Knight who used to, oh, God, no, he, he mixed, uh, he used to mix music for, um, or did live sound guy stuff for um, Memphis and May and New Daisy and stuff. He's, oh, no. He's opening a studio here in Little Rock. Nice. Um, I'm going to be helping him set Love up. the New Daisy. It's reopening. Yo, yeah, are they? <laughs> yeah, buddy. That's cool. Dude, it's cool as fuck. I was so happy when I read that. That was one of the venues when it closed. I was just downtrodden. I was like, this can't yeah. be real. Please, God, don't take the we New Daisy. We played there a couple times with Muck Sticky. I've only ever went to shows there, but it was always my bucket list to like play a show there. And now that it yeah. can possibly happen, I'm like, very excited. Yeah, because I don't have a lot of bucket list shit left. I've done all the things I wanted to do. Yeah. For the most part. Yeah, yeah. There's still a couple really big ones, but that's more like, you know, butterfly in the sky, <laughs> sugar um, dream shit. Yeah, yeah. LeVar Burton type dreams. You know, like fucking play in front of like 10,000 people. That's never going to happen. Of people, that's a lot of fucking people. I would also like that, yeah. I think I've played in front of like even if it's just 4,000 just to experience it, yeah. I think mine's close to two, yeah. It's like the most, which is insane. It's, it's an insane people. amount of fucking people, but I want to see what like that crest, like five. Yeah. I've seen in five, you know, five you can see kind of everything in one tens where it starts to get like I couldn't even see all the people. You remember the gossip? Uh, no, mm -mm. so they were a little rock band, or no, Cersei. Cersei okay. band, uh, and they were like blues pop. Okay, with a female vocalist, she's got like a big voice, Aretha Franklin type oh, voice. Oh, my right? favorite! Oh, she's so good. Uh, she's gonna make me cry. I'll, I'll send you a link to that. Please she, do. She's good. So she uh, tried real hard to make it here in Arkansas. I can't remember when this was. It's impossible sometimes. And uh, the it's happened, but... and the Arkansas Times told her she like. In no uncertain terms, they told her she was too fat for pop music. Okay. And uh, so the only place that would book them here was Vino's. They ended up moving up to, uh, after after college, they moved up to, um, oh, Oregon. What's that place up there everybody goes to? Portland? Portland. Mm -hmm. Yeah. <laughs> Bad I remember. No, I things. got it, dude. We had, a, we had a long night last night. It's fine. <laughs> So they, they made it out of Portland. Bang over. She ended up becoming friends with people in the fashion industry. She got they got huge right. in uh 
in the UK. They played. Uh, they played uh, overseas. Is where you want to be huge. If you get huge somewhere, you want to be overseas. So she festivals oh, like a I watched a video over there of her playing a festival yep. with three hundred thousand people singing Fuck. along to her music. And this bitch from Searcy, Arkansas. So when she comes here to Little Rock, Vino's is the only place she'll fucking play because no it's the only place that would have her. How about that? Yeah. Yeah. That's fucking wicked. Yeah, gossip God, is really dude. cool. They had a... three hundred thousand. I'd shit on myself. <laughs> and they're everybody's singing along to her music, you know. And she's like friends with like um... the unrealness of that. Would that? Yeah. Sh- I feel like your bones would shake. Yeah, yeah. Legitimately, they they played the music on the um, the the what is it? The Victoria's Secret uh, fashion show okay. one year. I was like, hey, that's standing in the way of control. It's like, <laughs> wow, man. And I haven't even heard of that. Yeah, the biggest fuck. See how how does that happen? Shit like that blows my mind. How somebody can do something and, and there can be a story like that, yeah. and you can be so into the thing and you never never have a, 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 a you know no clue. Yeah, one year I went and collected. I went to Arkansas Record and CD Exchange and collected all of their old old demos before mm-hmm. they left Arkansas. They had a bunch of them for sale down there. They were gossip. But before that, they were the gossip when they mm-hmm. were here. Like, you know, like it was like a, 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 the prodigy, and then they became prodigy. Prodigy, yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. And then they became the prodigy again. Legal stuff, I'm yeah. sure. Most, time, <laughs> most times that's what that is, right? That, that's actually how our name happened. Really? So, like, Monster Boy. I read a lot of, like, Stephen King, you know? Okay. Big, big reader. Um, and in Stephen King novels, especially, like, I'm a huge Dark Tower fanatic, you know, big okay. nerd. Big nerd. Um, <laughs> so there's always in his books, like, there's the power. There's two big powers. Right. There's, there's the, the innocence of youth, uh, you know, often, especially in the Dark Tower, categorized as, like, the boy. Right. And then there's, like, the monster, you know, and that's the other sort of thing, like, with it and, uh, you know, Crimson King and stuff like mm. that. So, uh, so I just like the, the kind of the dichotomy between the two. And I was like, ah, oh, monster boy. Nice. So, you know, V joins me. We're 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 recording music. Devin Castle's mixing and mastering. Damn. We're dropping singles every three weeks. Really? That was our um our waterfall releases. Uh-huh. Uh huh. For our first stint before I got sick, I stopped in twenty nineteen. Right. Um, late twenty nineteen was our last release until this EP. It just just came out. Um, Hell yeah! <laughs> yeah, that's right. Yeah. <laughs> um. But yeah, uh, so like, all of a sudden we're getting rejections on on bookings, and they're like, we're like, what, what, what can we ask? What you know, why you wouldn't want to book us? And they're like, oh well, you know, we we tend to stick to like English language, and we're not, we don't really book like rap or real hard grunge grungy music, and we're like, so like, what the fuck is going on? So we went to look at our Spotify. And some Russian grimecore metal rapper oh. has started releasing his music under Monster Boy in all capitals. Well, damn. Amazon and 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 uh, and Spotify and mm-hmm. Apple Music, they all just like, oh, we've got a file for Monster Boy. And they started dumping it in there. I was like, <sighs> so we contacted Paul um, because uh, he's, well, he's like our, our entertainment lawyer. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And he's like, what can we do about this? And he's like, hold up. <laughs> he's like, I could do it. I could litigate this, but you don't, you don't want to pay that Mm-mm. for international copyright law with a Russian that doesn't give a shit about you. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Like it's not gonna, it's not really, we can't really do anything about this. That's going to make any sense for you financially. Yeah. It's like, best thing you could do is change your name. And I was like, oh, I hate that. Yep. But I work with DistroKid, and you can do that with DistroKid. Yeah. You can, like, so uh, I'd had this idea for an, a Monster Boy album called Monster Boy Lives, where it was like, uh, there's going to be Monster Boy, and there was going to be like Lives, and it's going to have all the circles with the little people in it, like a, like an old uh, Weird Science or, oh, yeah, or like yeah. one of those old pulp novels or yeah. like uh, you know, Weird Tales kind of look. And like a hand up out of the ground, it's like uh-huh. Monster Boy Lives. <laughs> uh, and so I had gotten the website monsterboylives.com before we were Monster Boy Lives. He was like, why don't you just change it to Monster Boy Lives? And we're like, oh, that's a good idea. 
I mean, you do what you got to do, man. Yeah. yeah. Especially out there. It's like nothing. It almost seems like it, it, as weird as of a band name as that is. And it was still something that somebody else also thought of. Yeah. Yeah. You know? Well, and later I found out, um, I did research, I swear. <laughs> there were no other bands called Monster Boy at the time when I started it. Exactly. That's what I'm saying. But there was. Uh, it just happened to my band named Johnny. Oh. I, ty- I typed it in just to see because I was looking for the album and I didn't want to go through the. So I just hit the search tab. It's yeah. way faster. <coughs> and uh, <coughs> another one popped up. I was like, get the fuck out of here. Son it's a bunch of, of kids yeah. in a punk rock band. Yeah. Yeah. But they put official because I know they looked it up and ours definitely popped up. Yeah. Because <laughs> yeah. we're the only one. It's us and the horse thief we're named after. <laughs> oh, yeah. 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 But, well, you know, um, there's a video game <laughs> called Monster Boy. In Wonderland, or something like that. And so I was like, oh, shit. <laughs> so I, I kind of like having Monster Boy Lives, because it is a weird name, and I don't think anybody else is going to snag that as a combination. Right, and it's know? three letters long. Most people these days try to go shorter. Yeah. You know, one word. Yeah, yeah. Try to. I tried to. Yeah. You know, there's only so many one-word bands. Or you, you start adding the in front of it. Yeah. I yeah. like So I like Missio. It's like, uh, have you have you seen these guys? Mm-mm. They're like, um, oh goodness, they're kind of like um, dark, not dark wave, but like like it's like heavy but poppy sometimes. Okay, uh, they're like a three piece from Austin. Um, sometimes it's got some like they like they've done some work with like uh, hip hop artists and stuff, but. They're kind of like uh, like industrial rock almost. Okay. Uh, but yeah, it's like Mission, but without an N. I'm like, uh, uh. <laughs> that's smart. Smart. They come up with your own word. <laughs> <laughs> What's your band's name? Glorp. Glorping, Stein, <laughs> yeah. Flerpin. <laughs> that's where we're going. <laughs> we're so close. Dude, it's so hard to come up with a band name. The future is now, old man. <laughs> I'm, in, I'm in Crows. It's a band called Crows with my wife. And the original one was Three Road Crows. Oh. Because you always see crows in threes. Like, we just have, like, this inside joke. Because they'll be eating carcasses, you know? Yeah, yeah. Uh, <laughs> so we had Three Road Crows. And it was just Road Crows. Because we were like, well, let's shorten it. Yeah. And then we were like, that's it doesn't sound good. And then we just like, let's do crows. And, of course, there's crows band. For sure. There's crow, crows. So then we the were black like. black crows. Uh-huh. And then we were like, <laughs> okay, so how can we keep it with the crow theme? <laughs> <laughs> and so, like, after hours of deliberation, my wife's finally like, why don't we just spell it different? I was like, that's the one. How that's do we do one. it? So K-R-O-Z-E. Crows. crows. It's like prose, but crows. Uh-huh. Yeah. You gotta, that's also not how you spell prose. But... You got to get creative, man. <laughs> for real. So that's, 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 uh, that's, that should be the takeaway for today is you just got to be creative. You do. And you have to just do it. That's one of my bigger ones. The power of the ask, and you have to just do, don't talk about it for too long. Mm-hmm. Just do it. Because yeah. I talked about doing this for two years, and I wish I'd started the the first conversation I had. Yeah, yeah. Because you know? I'd be two years ahead of what happened, and especially with having to lose a whole year. Because yeah. nobody, you know, we couldn't be around each other. And couldn't get people in mm-hmm. to face to face. I had two, I think. I think I did two or three the whole time, a whole year. And we the first year, we did every single week. Boom, 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 boom. Episode every single week. Yeah. And then that happened, and we only did three, so then you lose traction like a motherfucker. Did some stuff with the internet, partnered with some people, did some things, but now now it's full force again. We haven't yeah. missed a week in 30, 40, yes. five, this week, 45 episodes straight. Doing the thing. Yeah. Yeah. Multiple versions of even just this run. <laughs> we've come a long way. <laughs> yeah, that's really cool. Like, yeah, I yeah. really like what you guys got going on here. Uh, and it's cool to like listen to, to the episodes. You sort of like get to know people, you know? Yes. Uh, and I think that's really good. That's what this is. It's just a shit. It's just a shit around. We can talk about music. We can talk about grants. We're talking about mowing the lawn. Yeah. We've covered all those topics today. It's not so much an interview, but just, you know, two people getting to know each other. That's my favorite version of podcasting. I think it's, what, what that does, too, uh, is community building. Yeah, absolutely. Between artists in Arkansas. When you kind of see, I've, I've definitely had people be like, oh, well, I thought this person was like this. Mm-hmm. But then I saw your podcast and realized they're just 
you know, I just put that on them for which that's that's what we do. That's yeah. a human nature. Yeah, yeah. I, I put something on you because my brain doesn't know how to interpret you, so I'm gonna guess you're like this, and uh, something tells me don't fuck with you as a person. Yeah, yeah. You know, it's a survival instinct that we just still have in us for sure. Yeah, yeah. We all do it. Uh, you know, I mean, you're you're right. Judging and people is what got us here. You know, it's like that. That's. It's it's a natural human yeah. like uh, response to stereotype the world around you, well, so that you can safely move through it. When your, the world used the to be dangerous and everything was out to eat you, or if you're you know, say Roman time, or even you know all of history, people cut hordes of armies coming to kill you. If somebody yeah. looks like they're from this thing, you're like fuck that. Yeah, go over yeah. here. You know, I think some some groups are still fighting against that. They, they there, are there's people trying Absolutely. to kill other people in this world. But even on the easier side, it's still like a micro thing. Yeah, you yeah, know, you still exactly. do it. It's just like, eh, I don't like those shoes. He's like, it's too <laughs> too put together. You know, I'm a garbage person. I wore this is what I wore last night. I sweated in this. <laughs> this shirt was That's a, a dope ass t shirt. Dude, though. this is a fucking red ass. I love this fucking shirt. Eighteen dollars. Full Moon Records. Hey, Hell I want to yeah. play over there. You need to. I wanted it's to go Saturday shit. night. Uh, oh no, uh, Friday, Friday night. Friday night. Yeah. Yeah, I wanted to go Friday night, um, and we were just so exhausted. Yeah. Um, that age so, is yeah. a real motherfucker, man. Yeah. <laughs> well, you know, and we, you know, we've got a lot of stuff going on. Like, you know, uh -huh. you have kids? Uh, no, 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 no kids. Yeah, uh, we are, we are, we are dinks for life. There you go. Double income, no kids. Boom. <laughs> um, yeah, no, we we got fur babies. We got our cats. Yeah. Um, we got a dog. Yeah. Yeah. Was that the dog that I met? No, no, no. That's Cooper. It's Cooper. Yeah. Okay. Because yeah. Cooper was always oh, adorable. Oh, he's. Guy. I want to make twenty thousand of him. <laughs> Just pet all of them. <laughs> I love him so much. <laughs> just a room full of Coopers. Just a room of Coopers. This is my Cooper room. Uh -huh. <laughs> you open the door, they all just... <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, I've got two asshole cats, you know. Yeah, yeah, for sure. I, I like a... I, I have a real good hands-off approach to my pets. That you <laughs> just let them be their self and you then... You can't do that I'll with kids. Them. Please don't <laughs> shit in my floor. <laughs> and Veronica... <laughs> Let's just say she don't really like kids. Not that you know she has she has a protective instinct sure, sure, to make sure. sure that that kids are safe. Yeah, you know she wouldn't, and and she's like you know kids should have opportunities and stuff. But she's like don't touch me, you mm, gross you little booger sticky bastard. little fucking yeah. Yeah, who the fuck do you think you are, I'm, you little shit? I like anyway, kids. No, she's not no, quite I, that. I like <laughs> I like kids, but mine is more of a I can barely take care of myself. Yeah, so why yeah. would I ever? And that's where I'm at. Yeah. Yeah, I'm like, I'm in that, like, I, you know, I'm baby. <laughs> right. Like, I'm pretty selfish when it comes to that. Like, I'm not going to spread anything around or bring anybody else into the world because I'm just too busy with my own shit. Yeah, yeah. And I can barely keep up with what I got, let alone having a child. It would just be, and I'm very much like, if you have a kid, that's kind of your life. Yep. I live that's in right. that vein. That's so right. I would just drop everything and just that's be a dad. That's so important. Like, you know, yeah. like once you have kids, like that's that's your responsibility now. That's I think that's, so. That's like they they're uh you know, like like we as like you and I as people, like our responsibility to ourselves is to take care of ourselves. Right. So that we can be <coughs> who we need like we can be who we need to be for our public stuff, like mm -hmm. like performing, podcasting, stuff like that. All the stuff, yeah. You know, you, you've got to take care of you, like you have a responsibility to take care of yourself so that you can do that efficiently. Right. Uh, and then when you have a kid, it's like, you know, you have this new giant part of yourself that you have to take care <sighs> yeah, of. Yeah, it's a literal replica. Like, you're, yeah, you're replicated. Yeah. And you got to keep it alive forever. Yeah. Or, or hopefully. Or you're going to jail, probably. <laughs> so, <Hopefully>, like, <laughs> <yeah>. <laughs> So like, you know, um, Veronica's just in, she's in that world. It's like, don't hand me a baby. Mm -hmm. I won't touch him. Three months. I used to be a month. Now it's three. You ever watch that movie, Mad God? Uh uh. Oh, that's a fucked up movie. You're dropping some wrecks today. I like it. I'll okay. check it out. So it is a it is a um, God. It took this guy like a decade to put it together, but he's like this is the one where he followed the people their whole life. Is that what that movie? No this this guy uh, he he does stop motion animation and oh, it shit. is horrifying and gross i love it and there's this one moment where there's this like it's like gumby but with murder creature <laughs> that it there's a baby that they oh, got no. and it grabs the baby like this and it's like, 
and then it carries the baby to where they crush it up to be space cocaine. And <laughs> <laughs> did Guar make this? <laughs> I, I, I can't remember the dude's name. It's hilarious. It's so, space it's cocaine. so wild. <laughs> And yeah, it's definitely like a big block of space cocaine. <laughs> <laughs> and um <laughs> it's it's almost like a trip throughout the human body, but like things are like embodied by like giant creature machines oh, and like check that blood shit out. and What's gore it called? everywhere. Mad God. Mad God. Yeah. Yeah, I'll need to watch that. And there's lots of like war Is stuff. Is it findable and, at all? Uh yeah, yeah. Is um it? Amazon maybe? Okay. Yeah, Amazon has everything. I don't even know why. Or Shutter? Shutter. Yeah. It might be on Shutter. Oh, the horror streaming yeah. platform? Yeah. yeah. Uh but they have fucking everything. Yeah, yeah, they All really the obscure do. stuff. That oh. blit, yeah, they really deep dive on that. Uh so how long have you, so I wanted to get this out of you too before we uh how many bands have you been in? I, think I know I you've been around like for a while. Nine? Really? I'm a long-term relationship kind of girl. So, <laughs> <laughs> literally, when I was in high school, my relationships were seven months, nine months, eleven months. Uh-huh. Like, the girls had to break up with me. I'm fucking clingy, <laughs> you know. <laughs> Veronica and I have been together for twenty years. Shit. Married for eighteen in August. Phenomenal. Uh, so yeah. So with bands, um, let's see. Uh, I'll I'll rattle off a few. We got um. Catatoxic, I was okay. bass player. Uh, Flaming Death Fairies, The that, People's Republic of Cassiotones. That's Cassio the one Jones. I remember and have seen. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, Reticent was another one. Heard of that. Those three, I was uh, front man and writer for okay. everything. Uh, anytime we had a member that would leave, their songs would leave with them. You know oh, what okay. I mean? Yeah, thing. yeah. Um, ooh. Uh, I had a, a recording stint with a band called the Straight Jacket Monkey Weasels. <laughs> <laughs> well, there's one that's not getting copied <laughs> right i wonder if there's a band out there straight jacket monkey weasel google it <laughs> there isn't uh, no we never put out anything <laughs> i still got those songs though um put them out fuck it band uh, camp is free as shit monster boy lives that's it i, I had two more <coughs> two or three more it'd I, be like that I, I counted them up some bands don't even make it to the naming process but uh like, oh yeah i was in a band called Silas in high school okay uh, was that your first band yeah yeah it was me and matt mcmillan and we just wrote like two songs for a, a, a talent show talent show no shit yeah <laughs> it, it went it went over really well did you get to play it uh yeah oh because ours had a vetting process you could not they wouldn't just let everybody in yeah matt mcmillan he was interesting he was in he he was really cool. I, I wish he still made music. Uh, he's like an IT guy, mm. but he he did a he worked with a band called Ecstatic in Germany when he was like sixteen, seventeen years old. He's doing like programming for their synth stuff, and they're like touring in Germany. You know, damn. Uh, so yeah, we got together and did this like uh, perfect circle vibe okay. sort of thing before perfect circle was a thing. Yeah. Um, yeah, it was, uh, it was pretty cool. It was like that, like, it was like rock, but it was like, like chill rock or like, yeah, like, yeah, yeah. Yeah. I don't know how you like chill rock makes sense. Yeah. That yeah. like that, that, um, perfect circle 13th step album kind of had similar vibes. Would you call it soft rock? Maybe. Maybe. Yacht metal. Is that- yacht, yacht metal. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> this song is metal and it's like fucking what? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> You know, it's like he's, anything that's got Danny Carey on drums. Or uh, was it Danny Carey? Yeah. No, so. no, no. Josh Freeze. Oh, okay. Josh Freeze on drums. He's got <coughs> he's got the metal vibes. <coughs> yeah, yeah. So I think I ended up counting nine, but I could only recall like five today. So it's fine. <laughs> I, I haven't been in that many. Oh no, yes, I have. I take that back. I have been in a lot. I forget sometimes I'll step into one and it'll just kind of like and then, yeah. and then sometimes. I've been in two bands long enough where there's no like the num the members have changed so much mm-hmm. that it doesn't even feel like the same band. Yeah, yeah. You know, sometimes that's good though. Not yeah. feeling like like what you used to. So long as the writing force stays the same, I feel like most things don't change. It's just yeah. the faces. You yeah. know, really, what's most bands? One or two people. It's mm-hmm. rare when everyone's writing. Yeah, yeah. There are some people that just want to show up and play. I mean, yeah, hell yeah. <sighs> you know, um. I wish I had that in me, but I'm too much of a writing a holic. Mm-hmm. I love it. 
Yeah, it's I was thinking about shit. this the other day. Uh, my first show at Vino's with like like intent to be a real band was uh, 2003, 2003? 2004. Okay. And Sam Allen, uh-huh. Amanda Allen, put us on stage for the first run. Hell yeah. And uh, yeah, it was really cool. So was it? She so was she the main person then? Cause she took over after Fletcher left. No, this was before. She was just booking shows around. Okay. As part of like, um, didn't she? She work with no. That was uh, Haley. Oh, Greengrass or yeah, yeah, yeah. But she did work with Greengrass. Didn't yeah, Sam. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So this was be- right before Sam Greengrass. Haley, and then that was Aaron and James. Right, they yeah. own Greengrass. I and miss then, Aaron. So much. Yeah. He works, at, or I guess he's co-owner of Pizza D's. I can't remember. Is that right? Mm-hmm. Okay. So he's there. Like, you can go there and see him every now and then. Did he shave that big-ass beard he had? <laughs> so he goes from mustache to beard. Last time I saw uh, him, I think it was beard. Okay, all right. He can yeah. keep the beard. Because <laughs> yeah. Veronica was like, Veronica was like, oh, he's so handsome. <laughs> and then he grew that big-ass beard. And she's like, why would he do that? And I'm like, eh, Oh, dude, that thing was massive. I got massive. this shit locked I, in I, now. I, dude, I love Aaron. I mean, it's one of my goals. <laughs> he's one of my dream guests to, to get on this. Yeah, yeah. I know he would do it, but I think it's just like a time thing. Yeah. He had uh, he had us set up. And this was the last show before he quit. He, put, he was putting together that uh, festival mm. where the, the money fell through. Dude, it's... He man. was bringing in uh, Presidents of the United States of America. Yeah. They were going to play on our equipment. Yeah. Uh, I was so fucking pumped for that. And when he lost it, I was so, like, heartbroken for him. Dude, their story is just one of... Yeah. It's just, like, build it up, build it up, build it up to watch it all crumble down. And they did all the work. Yeah. They did all the work. He was, like, the guy for, like, 20 years. Yeah. And it just crumbled down because some fucking other asshole. Yeah. God, I want him to tell this story so bad. Uh, I want to hear it. That'll be one <laughs> hell. That'll be like a fucking five. That'll, my, that'll probably end up being the longest podcast. Yeah, yeah. You, you, could, you could break that up over two, two three podcasts, <laughs> you know? I'm not that kind of guy. I'm just like, put it out. They'll listen or they won't. We're going to talk to the whole fucking thing. Tell me everything yep. right I want to know it all. Yeah. Well, I, I worked with him for years. Yeah. Because we worked together after the village started. I met him doing production stuff. I'd known him already, but not like knew him. And then yeah, we started yeah. doing shows together, working giant fucking shows, shows that they would put on. I'd be a hand at. And yeah. then as time goes on, you know, you're just sitting in the break room bullshitting. Um, but he just, man, crazy, crazy, crazy story. And I don't, most people don't even know his name anymore. Yeah, he's yeah. not like a name that gets brought up in the music scene. Like y'all, y'all should, it's like y'all should be sad know. not to have this uh-huh. man on your side. Yep. he was a he was a fucking uh, he championed. He was the king god of fucking shows. Dude, ever all the cool shit. That original Juanitas, mm-hmm. they had everyone came there. It was like the dream venue. It was. It was, it was a fucking like uh, a mecca. And we played it all the time, and I fucking loved it. See, we it. never did. See, we always got the <laughs> my favorite story, dude. My band, for like years, hounded, please let us play, please let us play. Well, you don't really fit the stuff, because, you know, they were very tight of venue. Yeah, you know? yeah. Come on, man. I promise you we'll bring a crowd, which we did bring a crowd. We had really good shows. Uh, come on, man, blah, 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 this and that. And then finally, dude, finally we get it, right? He's like, all right, I'll give you, I'll give you a shot. Yeah. Here's the date, blah, 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 blah. Dude, like a week before the show, we fucking break up. Oh, and we don't play the show. No, <laughs> yeah. no. Yeah. So I, I brought that up to him too. He's like, "Yeah, I fucking hated y'all for that." He's, he remembered, no. yeah, <laughs> yeah. It's like, dude, y'all fucking hounded me, and then you break up. <laughs> oh, that was like, what was that one band? Um, There's a band that won the Arkansas Times Showcase thing. And they they got all these shows that they're uh-huh. contracted to do and after that. And then they that. break up afterwards. And they broke up, dude. and then yeah. That happens so much. Yeah. There was a band, their name was Primo. Yeah, Primo. Do you remember them? They got a thing, won a battle of the bands, got some record was contract. That, was, that, was that around the time of like Cosmic Giggle Factory? Or? That would have been like 99, 2000, yeah. 2001, okay. 2002. Like yeah, then I do remember that. High school era. Yeah, and they were big and got <clears throat> won some contests, got a bunch of recording time <clears throat> with a label and just, that was it. Yeah. That's the last you ever heard of them. Like, ah. It's weird how that works, man. You know what it is? I ran into this a lot. Um, it's, 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 
I find it with a lot of people that like they they like play, but they're not. They don't like. They're the people who are like, oh, I don't want to be famous, or mm. or the people who are like, oh, I really want to do this, and then when it comes up, they get that like well, self destructive vibe or that yes. like fear of success. Uh huh. That breaks so many people. Yep. That's why it was so hard to keep the wheels on uh, the FDF. It was like. There's a fear of the unknown because you don't know if you like making it doesn't necessarily mean making it. Yeah, exactly. If you get out there. It's like, yeah, but the coffee job always going to be there. Yeah. The fit, you know, the by the hour you work your way back up, you can be making 75K at Starbucks within five years. Yeah. You know, mm-hmm. if you really just work hard as fuck. Yeah. If you, if you really want to be a life, you know, there. but you can go out and do stuff and fail and come back and just do that. I think sometimes too, people, it was a hobby that they thought they wanted more from. And when they get more, they're like, oh, this is not, this isn't what I wanted out of my life. I had a band guy practice, like, join the band. We said, we have uh, intentions to tour. Right. We have the van. We have the trailer. We have the lights. We have the show. We are selling out venues in Arkansas. Fucking, when we, like, we, you know, we have j- just last year played South by Southwest. Mm. We've got all these prospects. Let's do it. We train up for like, um, at the time we were wanting to do a split between like our full, like we had 50 fucking songs. With Jesus. The band. You know, so we learned all a lot of, of fucking songs. dude. And then we learned about, it's been around 17 years. I think we have like <laughs> maybe 20, maybe. Yeah. Oh, I'm, I'm prolific. Uh, <laughs> shit. I've written seven new songs since I bought a, a synthesizer from Trey at the gear swap. <laughs> like, <laughs> um, so like we learned 30 covers cause we were going to do a splits where we would like, yeah, yeah. you know, like play money shows mm-hmm. and then like play glory shows and the money shows would support the glory shows. Yep. It was the plan. It was going to work. We learned all this stuff. We said, Hey, we're about to go on tour. And then the guy's like, ah, uh, man, I, 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 I gotta, I can't be, I can't do it. And it's like, Ugh. why not he's like well i didn't think you were serious like i didn't think we were really like I, I knew you wanted to but i didn't think we were going to get to the point where we would actually have to leave the state Bro, and i'm like i want to punch you on. in your fucking face right now and i'm not a violent guy right like i'm a little i'm just, a little pansy like i don't want to fight people but i was so me, mad Dale. you fuck me <laughs> <laughs> yes yes Dude, fuck! I was oh, so God. pissed off. I feel you. That was one of the that it what he wasn't the last, but it was like it was like that was one of the the that, last that, things that, that like broke the band for me, and I was like, "Fuck it, I'm not putting it back together again." That Aaron Hurley thing I just told you—that's that's the band. We so same thing. Like we went and played a showcase in front of Epic and Sony Records. Yeah, and Epic showed a lot of interest and wanted the demos we were working on. And when we got back, the drummer had a fucking. Meltdown. Change your fucking heart. Yep. Oh, I don't actually want to do Epic Records, dude. Yeah. That's the fucking label at that time. This was 2002. Oh, yeah. You know, every fucking band was that. You know, that's what you want. And, dude, like a week later, maybe two weeks, but it was like, played the showcase, got too real, bing, bang, boom, done. Yep. Yep. I had two guys um, sabotage a show that we were playing in front of Capitol Records. Fuck. Because um, Veronica had asked them. She was management. And we had a couple of guys that didn't like uh, a woman being in charge. Okay. They didn't like the idea of. Yeah. And he, like I, one of the guys, he would call me and he'd be like, you need to get your girl. You need to tell her to stop uh, sassing me. Shut the fuck up. Yeah. No. Same dude who later tried to sleep with me. Fucking slept with so many people. Or like yeah. fucked around on his wife. So anyway, this dude pissed me the fuck off. And so he tell. and his best friend, who he totally fucked his best friend's girl, um, he and his best friend, like like she had asked him to make a couple of changes and like so that they would we would all look a little more put together. Right. Like as far as costuming. Mm-hmm. And they wore stuff that looked great there and right before they got on stage they changed into their shit they usually wore that like clashed with everything that the record label lady or the A&R who was putting us in front of her exec friends right who came out to like fucking easy street in little rock you remember that yeah the, the, like cool little gay bar that yeah. had the the punk shows on the other side yeah so they come to fucking easy street wow. to watch us play and then they like 
went out there and did that and, and they left three three songs in Ugh. and then veronica was like why the fuck did you do that we had Capitol records in the audience here tonight she didn't tell them before the show because that whole fear of success right, right, blowing right, right, right. up thing is real yeah. pre- prevalent and they were like fuck Capitol records and high-fived over her head and i was like oh we're replacing you and we're replacing you I think at that moment, yeah, you're just done. <laughs> like, yeah, yeah. like if like, it's like we work crazy. in IT, we want to be hometown heroes, but that's it. And we're like, I mean, you need hometown heroes too, but only if you want to be that. Like we, like of course we want to build up our hometown, but like yeah. we we could stand to go on tour in Tennessee and fucking Texas. And yeah, the surrounding five ma- states, man. It's you know, a great start. Great starting point. Make fucking money as a band. I don't know. Who ever heard of such a thing? Uh, and you know, and I'm me How personally. Dare you? I'm not even stuck on making money as a band, <laughs> right? I just a living, you know. Yeah, yeah, just yeah. a living. Just I small. just want to be in front of people. That's it. Even if it was meager, I'd take. I would like. I, I, would, I would like lose conveniences. I'd step my cell phone down to like a dumb phone. Yeah. You know, if it meant I could tour around and just do that, fuck yeah, dude. Yeah. In an instant. Yeah. Veronica, now she she's not stuck on riches because like we make enough. To support our living, get them crypto Doge monies, baby. Right? Well, it, it, not really. That that whole thing is in the toilet. For <laughs> yeah, yeah, it's all gone since since Dogecoin yeah. peaked, um, and Bitcoin crashed. Anyway, like, <laughs> so that's not supporting us. It's 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 art education. It's salon yeah, yeah, yeah. stuff, and it's it's music to a certain extent as well. Because we're, <clears throat> but when we go play the basement, that's nothing. Right, we're playing in front of really really important people we're playing in yep. front of a hundred you know fucking nashvillians that are like in the music industry you themselves never know who the fuck's in that crowd oh that's yeah that's one of those places there like dallas austin la just you better mm-hmm. play your fucking heart out every time because mm-hmm. you really don't know who's there and you know uh and tuesday night is the industry night over there too so, like uh the weekend is more uh the what is it? The uh, tourist mm. kind of thing. Gotcha. Yeah, weekend. Oh, at the basement. Yeah, just yeah. in general. But like the people Tuesday, Wednesday night. Those people are like industry going out. Fuck yeah. Yeah, just some just some tips for y'all. Um. <laughs> Dude, you've been dropping all kinds of fucking heat today. Good lord. But yeah, uh, you know, it's like um, you, th- those shows don't pay, but that's glory. Right. And uh, that's what Veronica wants. She wants. She wants a Grammy. She wants. The glory of it. Yeah, Yeah, the glory that she wants a song. Literally, her thing that she wants is she wants us to make a song that people are going to have to put on their fucking covers (laughs) list after we die. Hell yeah. Future nostalgia. Damn, that's a fucking. And y'all are doing all, man. More power to you, dude. That is wild shit. Y'all are busy as fuck. You want to wrap this bitch up? How long have we been going, Kurt? Two hours and seven. Hell yeah, hey, we that, made that it. That seems that seems like that's a about right. That's a good point. Yeah. yeah. Fucking thanks for coming on, dude. You're fascinating. Y'all are fascinating. <laughs> Thank you. I'm weird. That's what I. Yeah, think. yeah, yeah. But, but you got it, your hands in every fucking fire imaginable. I, you know, I'm really passionate about Arkansas music. I can tell. Uh, Me too. I I haven't made it or anything. I haven't gotten a TV sync yet. Although we're signed with all these different sync labels, it's just time, man. But that's what launched off Evanescence was right. they got that sync in Daredevil. Well. Evanescence, just like almost any other band that's made it out of Arkansas, is like, all right, bye. Closes the door right behind them. Doesn't oh. tell anybody how it happened. You know, it's right. very much a hoarding resources thing. Yes. And though we haven't made it yet, uh, I think we're on track to do something. Sure. That will get us into uh, the national eye. Uh, and we're like holding the door open. Like, everybody come with us. This is, this is the way. Fuck we need yeah. to make Arkansas music like... Uh, we need to put Arkansas music on the map because we got yeah. a lot of talent here. Make it a hub. Yeah. A big one. And we could do we could do the big, you know, Tennessee, Arkansas, yeah. Texas. It, I, it, we, it used to be that way. It was. Before something. I don't even know why that ever stopped being a thing, but it was on the it was on the road trip of bands and then they just started passing it by. The best I ever heard it described was we went to a C market because they were like the money started getting better. So if you played in Dallas, you could just go play in Memphis for double the money yeah. and just skip right over Arkansas. And so yeah. they kind of just started doing that or they'd use this as a bus refueling. Stop. There were also bad actors uh, in the scene. You know, oh, lots. That killed it. Yeah. Lots bad. 
not paying people or fucking terrible fucking promotion. I ain't naming no names, but I've sat in rooms with those people and talked yeah. business, and uh, yeah. they're still that way. So, oh yeah, yeah. I've, I've been in many a rooms of the, you know, <laughs> yeah. Yep. Anyway. Thanks for coming, dude. Do you want to promote anything else while you're uh, here at the end? Social media? Yeah, yeah. Social media. You can find us at Monster Boy Lives. Um, that's on all. On everything? Yeah, yeah, on everything. Monsterboylives.com. Uh, at Monster Boy Lives on, on Instagram, uh, TikTok. Uh, right, all of it. Facebook. Yeah. yeah. All that stuff. Uh, check out the new EP that just came out on the 23rd. Fuck it's titled yeah. Heavy. Uh, I got another... Two albums in the works, and the uh, in in October. Keep an eye out because we're gonna release that creepy soundtrack stuff. Oh, cool! And we're just now getting into starting to figure out how to play that live. We're gonna do like a creepy okay. Halloween show. Oh, Let's cool. see if we can maybe do that at Full Moon or Whitewater. Uh, maybe hook dope. up with Stephanie Smittle. Oh she yeah, she does that like um like real cool uh like what is it like a experiential sort of thing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. All right. And we're on uh, all the stuff. Crashcast Pod and on Twitter, Crashcast Pod 1. We're on Patreon. Five bucks. Uh, help support the show. It really does help. It makes sure I can buy things like the wrong water for our guests. <laughs> Woo-hoo! Uh, <laughs> and I don't have it to come out of my though. own pocket. It wasn't, it's not the worst one I've had, but it definitely made me more thirsty. My throat is dry as shit. Oh, yeah. Uh, <laughs> The, the rainwater was the weird one. <laughs> yeah. yeah. But uh, that's it. Thank you for listening. Peace. <laughs> we did it, dude. Oh my God.